And now we're going to move on to Vanguard of Influence Day 2. We have a lot of great people in here. Go ahead and enjoy it. Sip on your mango juice. And I'll see you in a bit. What's up guys? This is Vanguards of Influence Day 2. Hope you guys are enjoying the card fight con, but today we have we have an exciting moment for you guys all today, <laughs> and I'm kind of nervous about it, not gonna lie. And I think it's about time that we just introduce who we have today, and I hope you're excited as much as I am, because we got some big time heroes that we all like to see. So how about we just go on and introduce them? Because I can't I don't even know how I'm gonna introduce them. So what's up top deck heroes? Can you guys introduce yourselves? Ready? Yep. Hi, my name is Philip. And I'm Alex. And we are the Let's Top Deck Heroes. <laughs> we got it. Don't ask. Anyway, um, yeah. We're the Top Deck Heroes. Uh, we do a lot of gameplay videos, especially stuff like proxy videos, where we test out cards and see how they work, show people what they're capable of, and let kind of people have a head start on building decks. And also we do kind of, kind of beat time, a little segment where we just recap what happened in the week, case openings here and there, Please. average little YouTube channel, nothing special. We're some idiots, so hi. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Living Proof. Oh, uh, what's going on, team? Proof here, because I got to have that routine as well whenever I, I start talking about things. Um, most known for playing Spikes. Uh, kind of haven't been making videos a lot lately, but... You never know what could happen in the future. So I'm thankful to be here and I've been enjoying like getting to know everybody here and kind of getting ready to see what we're going to talk about. So it's going to be fun. Next is True Champion Steven. What is going on, y'all? I'm the True Champion Steven. Feel free to call me Steven. I make all kinds of trading card and anime related content on my channel. And I think I've been making actual content on YouTube on and off for, I think, two years starting this month. So really excited to talk about all the thoughts I have about what it's like to work in the Vanguard space. And just really excited to get to talk with all these amazing people here. I'm sure we're going to have a lovely conversation. Next is no other than Vanguard Insight, also known as Mr. Time Leap. Anchor Fighters, it's me, your boy from Vanguard Insider. I'm, uh, you probably know me from all the set reviews, in the analytics videos about everything, about everything that happened in Vanguard. And yeah, basically ev everything about what you want to know about the game. I'm uh, super excited to be here with some of the big names of Vanguard, with other guys you've seen and what we're going to hear. So can't wait to start a discussion with all you guys here. And last but certainly not least, we got on Twitch, on YouTube, the one, the only, Different Fight. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, some different fight, also go by Chris. I've been making Vanguard content for on and off seven years, but regularly uploading for about six years. And yeah, I mean, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and just all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a fun day. There's a lot of interesting things we're going to be covering. So I'm definitely excited to talk a lot about it. All right, guys, what's up? How's it going? Um, I'm glad you guys were able to come out here today. Um, not gonna lie, as you guys saw from starting off, I'm kind of nervous. All right, I didn't think I was actually gonna meet you guys. <laughs> we're all hard. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like all the other panels, we're gonna ask you a series of questions. I just want you guys to be calm about it, and overall, like, um, just be casual. If you guys want to ask other questions, go right ahead. I mean, we got the whole day or an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually was gonna start off with saying. Um, one question that is kind of big because as you see in the Vanguard community we have a um, a small increase throughout the years so I'm kind of shocked about that but like when Vanguard since Vanguard's a very niche community still um, compared to other card games like Magic the Galley and Yukio how would you say is the best way to gauge interest in your content you guys can uh, <laughs> order like it's, it's the same as, like very do we go in the order to which you, uh, you you introduce or we just like is it like anyone can answer that question um you in. guys can go in any order you want i just want to keep it like any free form um as long as there's no objections right <laughs> mm -hmm. all right okay yeah it's cutthroat you speak you talk <laughs> yeah, but we, yeah we can do we can do it in the order that we introduced you so we can go from top deck hero living proof true champion vanguard insider and then different fight uh, okay, so starting off with us, I guess the best way to gauge people or, or gauge interest in uh, our content, like we can kind of talk for uh, from the past year and a couple of months experience. Like we started off on YouTube three years ago, mm -hmm. 2017, November, something like that. And, you know, I can't anybody, you don't got none. 
you start zero, you go up. Yep. So we started doing gameplay deck profiles, you know, the, the niche, the every every other YouTuber does it, let's do it. Mm -hmm. I think Zero then, to Hero was another panel, but um, I'm just saying. <laughs> Just you gotta put the big story before you talk about the little one. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Fast Context. forward. First year, starting off. Second year, kind of went dark. Barely got anywhere. Yep. Last year, November 2019, we tried. We were like, we did this thing where we played what we liked, and we saw at least happen. I was like, hey, I want to test this now. Mm -hmm. And we did us some, you know, printed some cards, testing out. We just looked at each other, going. If we're doing this and enjoying it, mm -hmm. why not just record it and let other people enjoy it as well and see and all that? Mm -hmm. I was like, other than Freedom Do at a time, nobody was really doing that. I was like, let's give people some more content of these new cards, what they do, what they can. Yeah. Maybe there's going to be some interest here and there. And then, sure enough, a couple months later, just yeah. skyrocket up. It's, I feel like it's got to, you got to find that one thing that not, not only people are interested in, not a lot of people do, but also you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. like that's one of the bigger parts. Like we enjoy testing cards out and goofing around and having some fun time and figuring out combos. And we're just like, you know what? We think we're funny. We think you're entertaining. Maybe some other <laughs> people will also think that. <laughs> oh man, that's a, actually a very interesting topic. Um, so since you were talking about that, I was kind of curious um, before going fully off topic, is that kind of like where you got your name or like, is that how you built your name off or? Uh, we built our name from the beginning and it was literally our, our little group. Anytime something happened, like you draw, you draw a card, like, oh fuck, I'm missing a great one. Draw for turn. Bam! Top deck hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, I love that. I think that's my new origin story I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> With one local. There's no but the cards, Kaiba, boom! <laughs> draw your last pathetic card, you <laughs> It's All right, moment. Kaiba. So, um, how would you um, gauge interest in your content, Living Proof? Like, because you, I guess my, I guess my experience is a little bit different because I kind of specialize in one clan. So I kind of make ninety percent of my content about just Spike Brothers. So I'm like a niche within the niche already. So I guess the way I kind of gauge interest in what I've been putting out was, of course, viewership. But when something new, spike related, would come out, people would kind of turn to me and kind of want to see my thoughts on it. So I guess that was kind of my way of seeing, like, oh, like the stuff I've been putting out there is like sticking with people, and like they kind of either like my personality or they like the information that I give or they some combination of the two. So kind of putting those two things together means that somehow, some way, like the words that I'm saying are sticking with people, and that's the way I kind of gauge my. Um, gauge the interest in what I've been putting out there. Yeah, I noticed that a lot um, in most of your guys' videos, like some of you guys go with like the more uh, kind of like the influencer kind of side of things. And then there's like the factual evidence and like just factual information. So like, it's kind of like goes par on like which one you want to do more and which one attracts more attention to your channel, right? Mm -hmm. Like similar to, to Top Deck Heroes, like for me it's like, what what's out there that i enjoy watching like outside of vanguard content and what's something i could produce myself and let people see from a vanguard side of things that's kind of where some of my content came from like more like deep analytical stuff typically about spikes than more like deck play videos and kind of have a mixture of the two of them but if it's something i enjoy making then hopefully somebody enjoys watching it yeah uh, yeah i fully feel that like i i'm trying starting to do youtube um i was doing twitch in the beginning um i actually did old youtube videos for like um some of my old teams before but then like i kind of got away from it because i thought i was doing all the work um <laughs> oh, i hate that that <laughs> yeah, it is demanding yeah. definitely demanding yeah um but yeah i don't want to go off topic again um so um who's next what you guys what's your I, I think it's my turn now um so really i'm gonna take probably a weirder perspective here on this than maybe other people um because i do have a marketing background as an economist and stuff and so when it comes to me and how i make my content and what i sort of judge as a successful like video is as an example is more like less to do with how it actually performs because despite vanguard being a niche community the community still exists and i think they'll always be interested in it as long as it exists so as long as vanguard's a game I don't need to worry about people wanting to see my content. I know they will if it's related to Vanguard, or if it's related to the Vanguard anime, if it's related to whatever I want to make, right? 
So that's pretty good. So the, fo the, the focus of my videos and how I truly deem a video successful is if I find it valuable. Does it create value for the people that will see it? Because what matters to me isn't necessarily that people want to see it, because I think they already do. It's just that they need to find it, and then when they find it, they interact with it, they like it, they value it, they gain something from it. So I always try and leave a positive effect in every video, whether it's a negative thing about a deck that I might be liking, but I play really badly, but I reflect on my bad play so that way you guys can learn from my bad play, whether it's uh, just a cool deck that I want to work on, uh, whether it's a video about the Vanguard anime, whether it's the characters, whether it's the uh, actual fights they go through, whether it's anything, as long as I can do something that either gives you guys value, entertainment, uh, lessons, whatever it is, I think it'll be more interactable, and thus it'll be more successful. So like, you, you mentioned doing things with the anime, I, I know it's your most recent videos that... Um... You got some other YouTubers. You guys were doing like fights from the the old series. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we were. How, how how is that going, by the way? Like, I I actually thought that was an interesting concept to go um, for, and I I was wondering at first you guys were doing like the same moves that they did, or you guys were taking your own approach. And then I was watching, and I was like, oh, it's not bad. Actually, I kind of like this idea. So I started making a lot of Vanguard anime related videos right around the time Zero came out because what ended up happening was, for me personally, I got like the biggest nostalgia trip ever of just like, oh wow, five, eight years ago Vanguard me is just like, let's rewatch everything. And then I did. And I was like in love with it. And then I realized other people were doing it too. They're just rewatching old episodes of the anime. Even Bushiro realized this. And they're like, maybe we should put the old episodes back on our YouTube channel and see what happens. See if people will watch them. Uh, and so I wanted to start making videos about that. And then eventually it evolved into this thing of like, you know what the best part of Vanguard anime is? The actual card fights they have. So I was like, what if I just find a bunch of people that love Vanguard as much as I do, and who better than Vanguard content creators, and let's remake those fights the best way we can. And I thought about the way we could do that, and that's how the anime fight series became uh, came to fruition. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so I also noticed that um, Vanguard Insider, you also uh, did one of the fights as well, right? Which one was that? Uh, we did one with uh, Glory Mills from Against the Blood, and we did the one with uh, Chrono against Kamui uh, for the big finale. Oh, yeah. man. I, when I saw Kamui, I was like, I gotta watch this one. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, Teenage Kamui. coming up, boys. Yeah, it was great. It, th those are the, like, like, literally, the, I was so shocked how fun the G fight was. Because I was like, oh, this format was really cool and grindy. I'm not sure how fun this fight will be. It was intense. <laughs> it, it was, was so pretty much, good. It was so yeah. great. So, um,. Vanguard Insider, what's the what, what do you like? Vanguard Insider, Mr. Timely, which one do you want? Uh, Mr. Timely is uh, is fine. Uh, okay. Mr. Time Insider, <laughs> Mr. Time Insider, <laughs> Eric Time Insider. <laughs> what, what would you say is what would you say is the best way to gauge interest in your content? <laughs> um, for me, I will uh, as soon as the uh, what type of uh, direction the other guys gave, I'm gonna give a more boring type of answer. Uh, what I do is look in the data sets that we get from uh, from youtube as seems we have this whole backlog of analytics system like viewership uh, how many people click through your videos and that kind of stuff i try to look at those numbers and see how well a certain video performs a, a certain series but i also one of the more important things as i notice that a lot of newer uh, content creators think that something like a like and dislike ratio is very important but i personally take a more stance on the comments section as anybody can put a like or a dislike or can watch your video but that doesn't always give a good idea if that video is a is something the community wants to see and watching how people react on the comment section and not only on youtube but on facebook on twitter on reddit on discord it gives you a good idea how people watch and look at your type of videos and maybe give a better understanding if maybe your entire idea is not correct, but maybe a certain segment of that video they like very much, then maybe try something else with that idea and make a separate video or a separate series from that idea from it. And I think that type of direction is what I personally take to gauge if my content is interesting enough for viewers and if people would like to see that more in the future or not. And that's why, and that's how I decide to drop series or maybe start something new or try to experiment with different ideas and topics. Okay. So okay. yeah, like I, I actually um, kind of similar to Van YouTube Studio. I always look at like analytics on, on Twitch to see what's going well. Like, did anyone like when I was playing CFA? Did they did not? Um, other things is like I tried to be like a variety streamer sometimes, and like that doesn't work out well. Everyone likes me playing card fights, so I kind of stick to that. <laughs> to kind of really. bounce off of that real quick, because I completely understand that perspective. Because even I like, I look at analytics almost every single day. It's like, all right, what's the statistics this time? All right, here and there and there, and 
there was one moment while we were starting off our proxy play series is we didn't know if we want to do best of three or just one match at a time. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at the analytics and when we're doing best of three, you just see the viewer duration, first gameplay, second gameplay, third gameplay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, people are dropping the video after the game one. So what was, let's just upload game one and that's it. And not go further, let's just give one game. But then I started reading the comments and almost everybody was like, damn, I want to see like game two, best out of three. Maybe they, they were dealt a bad hand. Maybe they got a better chance. And it went from, all right, analytics, you're fine. People want to see this though. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's important to get the whole picture because one type of number doesn't tell you enough information to see what mm. works or doesn't work. That's the idea with, for example, the dislike and like ratio. Somebody can dislike your video, but that doesn't tell you anything of why they dislike. Maybe they just dislike because they didn't like Bermuda Triangle and you talked about the newest review for Bermuda Triangle. They can like your video. They like how you did the video, but because it was Bermuda Triangle, they click automatically dislike. So it's mm. very, very important to watch all these numbers and try to paint a full picture and see what people actually mean and what they actually want. Yeah. There is one way you can know when a dislike is, what intention behind a dislike is. When for a month straight, you upload a video and not if we, even within a minute, you already got a dislike. There's always one. Like, there's, there's, there's always one. There's always one. The highest chance is the guy's name is Danny Dang, but like, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, my favorite. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the moment that you have that Shout out to Danny Dang. <laughs> First comment I ever got on a video it was Danny. Oh my god. First and one he, ever. He just prays on like the, the smaller channels. He like as soon as somebody new pops up, he's like, ooh, you pray. Oh my god. Yes. Literally, it's crazy. Yeah, I, don't know know knows. I don't know how he knows. I never had a run in with uh, with comments Mr. Dang. on your video. You got a you good made chance, it. Mike. You made it. You made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you you passed the, the test. test. You pass a test of like, okay, you're you're noticed by Danny Dang. You can continue. <laughs> oh, oh my God! We, 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 I guess I'm not a full flesh channel yet. I've never had a run in with Danny Dang on any me, of my videos. Oh, 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 <laughs> not to say I want. I don't, I don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke. Got you pray. You got called out. <laughs> Holy crap. Maybe maybe it's because you guys were before he started or something. Maybe maybe, maybe. no no. We, we, we were grandfathered in. in our first year making content. Yeah, I mean, there maybe he started three years ago, and he didn't bother with different fight and with the other guys that already started before him. He's like, they won't see these comments. There's no point in me putting them. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait for him to watch this and be like, yes, they know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I noticed me. <laughs> I know. I know it's it's worldly, my though, oh. Daddy Dang. It's you, working. I know we still need to hear from uh, different fight on the fucking question. And we're still on. I just want to make this small, small tangent. Like, who all here has the uh, YouTube app and has notifications for comments popped up? So whenever your video goes up, it's like bing, 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 bing. Oh, yeah. shit. I used to be addicted. I see to that. everything. <laughs> I Everyone see thinks there's everything comments. I, I see all of it. I think a different vibe would be crazy if he sees every single comment. <laughs> I've had that off for a long time. <laughs> 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 I, I, I can, all, I can understand. Are off. All but, notifications are off. It's so I used, bad. To love, I used to love seeing the little YouTube icon pop up on my phone with a new comment popped in. That mm. was that was a big high for me. Like a little endorphin hit or <laughs> dopamine hit, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, that little yeah. Wheel, you're you're like, like, Someone's talking to me. What do you want to know? <laughs> so um actually you um Van Garnetta, you bring up a good um point. Um different fight. When you uh you you've come to a point where you have like what like thirty eight thousand on YouTube, right? Getting close to there, yeah. yeah. Almost. So <laughs> has your like way to gauge interest like shifted because you have a lot more people? Like, have you been able to like do like s small things differently at all? Mm, it's definitely changed over the years. Like my approach in general to see what people like, what people don't like, what people want to see, what the community needs, even um, definitely changes over the years. Like when I started, it was definitely just. Like the whole point of me having started all those years back was that I wanted to do the things that weren't the stuff that people were doing. So everyone was doing deck profiles and box openings. I was like, but everybody does that. That's so boring. And then I just went to do other stuff. And then so like it was it started from this like I guess selfish idea of like I want to be something else. Um and not really being too concerned about like what people want to see or you know those kind of things and just doing purely what I want to do. 
And I think the first year or so definitely was just that. And then once I started picking up, I was like, okay, you know, I have an audience now, so I should probably listen to what they want. And sometimes, uh, I think all of us probably have this experience where you'll commit to like a series or something, or like you'll be doing a certain kind of video. And then whether you take a bit too long to release the next one, or whether like you stop randomly uploading and then people are like, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Where's the next one? And that, you know, it starts getting on your mind and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so those kind of things definitely transform my like perception towards this in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that now in like the in the current state of things, it's definitely been like I remember when the reboot happened, it's been already two years. But I remember then I had to make this decision of like, okay, I've gone around just making content, you know, both for the competitive, basically mostly for the competitive community and also for, you know, what I want to make. So it was a lot more of like looking at tournament results or like whatever, you know, and also like doing my whatever meme content I was doing back then. But then when the reboot was happening, I was like, okay, there's going to be an influx of new players now. So I have to suddenly like start doing content for beginners that people that have been playing the game for so long don't even care about because it's like, or like they care about it, but the way that I oversimplify things, you know, people notice and they started to get a little bit annoyed by it. Whereas the beginners are like, oh, thank you, thank you for oversimplifying. And so it's been like, Vanguard has changed so much over all these years that you always have to like, just kind of adapt yourself and your content to the situation. And so it's, it's both gauging interest, but at the same time looking at what the community, what kind of trend is happening within the community, like what is actually happening in the Vanguard community that you might need to adapt to. And, you know, with Overdress coming up, it's probably going to be another shift like that where we're going to have new players coming in. We're going to have a lot of, you know, a, lot, a big influx of new people, but also people quitting. And then, like, how do you balance that? How do you kind of, like, cushion the damage and all that kind of stuff? You know, it's a lot of things to think about. And at the same time, it's like now with Zero as well, it's like it's... Another thing where it's like, if you want to do both, you have to split your interest. And to the point, I reached a point very recently where I was like, I've been doing so much zero content and so little TCG content. I was like, zero wasn't the reason I even opened my channel. Why am I not doing more TCG content? You know, like those kind of, there's so many internal, like, you know, just things you have to think about in general as you go about content creation over time that like, unless you have one specific formula video that you always do, um, you'll probably run into that kind of thing eventually. And on top of all that, like, you still want to stay true to yourself and, like, make the kind of content you want to make. Because oftentimes, like, as I mentioned earlier, it's like, there's people that, you know, they'll comment, like, oh, when are you making this? When are you making this? I want to see that. I want to see that. You know? And it's good to listen to that because that's that means there's people that want to see that. But is it something that you want to make? So if you don't, if it's something people want to see, it's cool. But if it literally is starting to get on your nerves and it's starting to make this hobby a chore for you to keep doing stuff that people ask that you don't want to make then you need to think, okay, at which point do I say, like, you know, cut this type of content or something or t change my approach or start not responding to what people want to see and just do things my own way. And then hopefully that kind of still lands with people and they stick, even if you start to change directions. And like, you know, for me, it's it's also this, I mean, I'm sure like for Proof and, and you know, for all of us, it's definitely we've probably felt times where, you know, you might want to try out things a bit differently, and then you're a bit nervous, like, oh, how will my community actually perceive this? Like, how will everyone look at this that I've suddenly, like, changed gears a little bit? And so I think that, yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of... I think the best way to, like, TLDR is, like, you have to find good ways to strike balance um, in both seeing how, like, what kind of content people want to see, but also in the way that you want to make it. So, yeah, it's a very long long answer, but yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey bro, home, don't, yeah, don't worry home. about it, guys. Wait, you're helping the community just giving these long answers. This is things that they want to know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing I wanted to kind of add on that really quick, because I had this really fun thought that I think might be good advice for people to hear in case they're struggling with this concept of balance, is understand that when you're making a video, who's that video for? And then if that person that you made that video for actually responds to you and gives you a comment, that's the comment you should listen to. Not mm -hmm. like the veteran of 10 years going like, why is this beginner video out? That doesn't make sense. I don't want to see this, right? Well, it wasn't for you, right? You, you weren't supposed to watch it, right? You didn't have to watch it if you didn't want to, right? So having that idea of smart, like, criticism as like understanding what it is you're trying to do and then and then asking those people what you should do next is a really good thing for you to figure out what you're how, how you're kind of can grow essentially on that path if it's a path you like for sure mm -hmm. i guess to kind of piggyback off of uh things that chris said like for me i've always felt apprehensive of branching out outside of spikes because i don't have as much knowledge there as i would for spikes but i've always at least pre-zero always kind of wanted to branch out and i feel like i've 
super pigeonholed myself into spikes but there is that apprehension being like oh will they like it will they think that i'm stupid for trying to delve into this will i not sound as smart as i would if i'm talking about spikes so those type of things i've wrestled with myself personally so it is like trying to like make what you want to make but to kind of find like is it comfortable are you making it like is it the, for the right reasons are you trying to just grow your channel trying to grow yourself things like that that i've personally wrestled with yeah, I think for all of us, there's been plenty of different internal struggles. <laughs> Yo, Proof, I, I got like the best advice you can hear right now. Ready for this? I am jealous of you. I wish, I wish I could have only done one thing for so long. Because you want to know what content I want to make so badly right now that I can't do because it would be a lie? It would be like starting Vanguard over again. I would love to like make a documentary series of like, let's get into this game and figure it out. You can totally be like, let's play a different clan. And like, see how that goes, and make an entire series about it. That would I would watch the crap out of that. Yeah, that's that's not one that's so bad. You got some great ideas there. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a ton of ideas that I've had that I've just dropped because I'm like, ah, I don't want to. It's either like laziness, like execution on my part, or <sighs> just like just time in general, things mm -hmm. like that. I do like, not have the work ethic to be. <laughs> A YouTuber. I just do not have it. I don't. Yeah, I yeah, editing. Yeah, you are. I love editing, but, I yeah, but you editing. are. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you you need it. You're not a YouTuber or an editor for a YouTube channel unless you finish the video and you look around and it's like fuck. It's 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> More like oh, I have to stream in an hour. <laughs> okay, streamers. I have a completely different respect for streamers because you got to turn on and be on for. Three, five, eight, twelve hours straight. You don't got Streaming's like a easy. half an hour to go. Streaming's, Streaming's easy, Streaming's bro. Streaming's easy. <laughs> Everything is hard. Like yeah. Streaming's yeah. easy. You just have to talk to the people. You just have to be yeah. like, hey, yeah. yeah. You know streaming's easier when my YouTube recording for a 15 minute video is as long as my stream was. <laughs> <laughs> you know streaming's easier. You know. I've spent yeah. many a night trying to I'm a perfectionist, which is why I hate editing as a as a general principle. But like just digging down into the minutia of it being like, oh, does this cut like go very seamlessly to the next part? Like, is it like perfect? Otherwise, I have to spend like five, ten minutes just to edit out one second of a video to make sure it just goes all the way through how I want it to. Editing and stuff. I I don't want to complain about editing anymore, but it is a time management nightmare. You're like, oh, this hit will take three hours. It'll be good. I'll get it out the next mm. day. Well, two days later, still not done. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, and the worst part is because in our segment of V-Time where we talk about stuff, we got a recurring animation of cards. <laughs> but then our smart editor says, when we were doing some news, go, oh, look, this popped up and do waves and motions and I don't know what else. And I'm just sitting here as I'm doing this motion thinking, Shit, I'm gonna have to edit this in that later. Try <laughs> <laughs> right to keep it simple. Always to keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, the same place. Before, um, after we were talking about like gauging, you guys were talking also about how you checked your overall performance and like um, and your progress, right? Would you mm -hmm. say that like when you started and um, when you continued, it started like switching your performance? Because I know like different fight touched a little bit on that, and so did Vanguard Insider. Do you guys have anything else you want to add about it? So you mean like how have we monitored our growth as we've grown or as we've changed and evolved? Or yeah, is it more like, like more like the analytics, but like um have you checked anything else past like where how many viewers you're getting? Do you feel like uh, yeah. there was anything okay. difference between viewers and subscribers? Like you made a more factual video, you didn't get a lot of viewers, but you got a lot more subscribers. Mm -hmm. The only metric I usually care about most of the time is audience retention. That's mm -hmm. the one that I care about. And I'm not necessarily saying average view duration. It's more like audience retention. So what parts are people watching and interacting with the most? Because that's how I think I can market my content the right way. You'll start to notice a lot of time when I do my videos nowadays, I try and have points in there where I just talk. And that's be and because while a lot of people may not want to come to the video for that people do stay for that because of where it is in the video uh, and what's going to happen next and so that allows me to sort of grow my personal brand in, in a sense so a, a cool like gambit that i've been running for a while now is sort of disguising my personality channel as an education channel you know i give you guys education i try and teach everyone as much as i can about the games that i play but at the end of the day it's about the games that i like about what i play about what i do and who i am and people respond to that. They, they learn about me by accident. And if you watch 
often while my videos just learn more things about me and that will be a cool way for me to sort of gauge overall growth in my personal brand as the true champion steven and not necessarily as a vanguard content creator but it is a lot of vanguard content that lets me do that so that's pretty nice yeah um yeah i, I that was also like bringing me to like another question to you all would be like um you guys in a sense are vanguard influencers you influence the the, the game in many ways as well um you influence the community and then sometimes you also influence bushy road's decisions on things right examples like zazan and like other things that like he's shown that why is this being a thing and we got them to change it to some extent some of you guys still wanted to be fully banned but <laughs> mm. um how would you guys Wait, say people, is like um listen to us? say again people listen to us yeah <laughs> 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 it's so hard to believe but like yeah they, they kind of do so yeah, how maybe... would you s what's up oh yeah sorry um so how would you say is like um your overall um feelings towards it um what's the best thing you enjoy about it do you feel like um in your own words being an influencer is beneficial for you for them or like not do you feel like people take your word for it too much like just give us your opinion about being an influencer for the Vanguard community. I think if it's all right, there's something I want to also like kind of add this that might, you know, spawn some more thoughts. But it's interesting how like Bushiroad as a company, they because basically the way it works is that Bushiroad Japan used to kind of have like this like just fist, just like grabbing and holding onto Bushiroad International really at all times. Yeah, yeah, like they just. We're squeezing them, and everything that Bushiroad International did was basically controlled by Bushiroad Japan, and it was always like, I mean, even now, Bushiroad Japan needs to give the yes-no on everything, but Bushiroad International has had so much more freedom over what they do for the last, like, two, three years, um, and that's really opened up a lot of things, because I remember back in 2016 summer, there was actually a good, um, there's a group of us, like, a lot of YouTubers that don't even make videos anymore, but a lot of us, like, we got into a group chat, and we were like, the competitive system is a joke. Uh, we need either date like two day events or best of three or both in some capacity, and so basically like we all just like banded together, made videos, and like released them over several days, so that like Bushiroad was always spammed by them to the point. Well, like not spam, but like if they had to check what people what people are saying about their game, that's all that people were saying. And then lo and behold, 2017, all of it was like no Spring Fest. We had day one um, best of one Swiss, day two top cut with best of three and it was like absolutely amazing so i was like already the first example where people were like pause hold on wait what we should listen <laughs> yeah that was the first kind of sign and then i remember like from my personal experience like uh the whole reason why i even got into commentary is because i emailed bushiroad uh, one of the bushiroad's branches basically i sent them an essay on why their way of streaming and like handling the coverage for worlds is not up to par and what they should do to make it better and then it was just literally just like an essay of ideas and what they should do and like learn from other companies radio silence for six months and then six months later here's your contract i was like wait what pause <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, uh like, yeah we need to be a con oh, yeah, content creator yeah. co a commentator for um the next event like, are you in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and then, like, a lot of the things that I mentioned were, like, realized in world. So I was like, okay, Bushiroad really does listen. And then, you know, now it's been even more so, like, you know, whether it's with Zazan or with, like, all these other things. And it really shows that, you know, I think there was one point where people were, like, cr like crying for reprints. And, well, lo and behold, English gets a reprint set, I think even two of them, and mm -hmm. Japan never did. And so, you know, um, it was it really shows that Bushiroad is a company that listens. And, like, the, this is the whole point that I was making. People used Bushiroad Listening as a company as an example for other games. Because I remember that when a lot of that was happening in Vanguard, I would then talk to my friends that play Yu-Gi-Oh! or play Magic, and then they would tell me that in their communities, they are, they noticed that the Vanguard community was actually making change to the company, and then they sort of were like, why, don't, like, why doesn't Konami listen to us? Why doesn't Wizards listen to us? And all that kind of stuff. And then after that, I started noticing that, hey, look, Konami is also starting to do stuff with their content creators, and Wizards is doing stuff with their content creators. So in a way, Bushiroad, I don't want to say Bushiroad would cause this, but I think that a lot of the noise that a lot of the communities made definitely like propelled that idea, at least. Yeah, that's kind of that's that's interesting, because the way... <laughs> Sorry, uh, it kind of the way that Konami was was that um, you know if they had a ruling question or they didn't understand how the card worked, they would ask and be like, "Oh no, this happens," even though it doesn't make sense. It's like, "Why is this?" Because Konami said so. Mm. <laughs> you just, yeah, yeah, just posted a tweet uh, specifically that example with Angel Fetter. 
Why has this happened? Well, because Bushiro said so. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like, well, rules are Those rules. Those decisions get still happen. They're still a business. They got to they gotta make their own decisions. Yeah, but they, yeah. I do think, I will, I will kind of add on to that a little bit, that uh, as someone who's played many different games, and in some cases, some of the best community-driven games like Pokemon and Vanguard, and then some of the not best ones like Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh!, I do think Bushiro does a better job at responding to its community. And because we have a voice to our community and we can sort of guide their desires, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, we can sort of influence what these people are talking about. And that's all. I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Bushiro is like a media company, correct? Like, yeah, like big, yeah. big Bushiro. Like so, like, they understand that, company. like, community value of what people want is what they should be doing. And so, like, I think they have this idea of, like, if we keep our ear to the ground, we can make decisions that will make our company and our uh, divisions last longer, I think. And that's a really cool thing for me. Mm. Like, I didn't know at all about the whole tournament thing, about YouTubers making content and then the tournaments changing. That was, that's new news to me, and I mean, uh, that's great. For me, it was always, like, I feel like Bushiro started listening whenever the first petition for the Zero Dragon Dust started. Hmm. Mm. Oh, I feel like that's where the ball yeah, the, got the, the, There was one time before that with the uh, Seven Seas card with the Rummy Labyrinth set. It was yeah, the same yeah. situation a year before. Card was printed. Everybody was like, "This is an infinite loop for Seven Seas." It was Get a starter, wasn't it? Right? It was yeah, a starter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that the Great Zero was busted. <laughs> <laughs> well, the exact same story that happened with Dust happened with that starter, but a lot of people for, ha have forgotten about that that it ever happened. We oh yeah, Our, oh oh, the memories of guard players. This <laughs> <laughs> is bad. Oh, I wish it was better. Uh, so I, have, uh, I, I remember have my own one Yeah, I was, I was I kind of my own thoughts about how Bushiro listens or doesn't listen at times mm -hmm. because for every like errata for like Dust and Infinite and stuff like that there's always like going back to the seven seas comment like the fact that like when they were trying to do more ban restricted list stuff it seemed like they weren't listening to us about what the problem card was because they kept hitting things around night spinal which is like the grade two like i think it's like if it's discarded you can call it from the mm -hmm. the drop zone mm -hmm. or something like that that's the whole part that enabled the grade one rush but they kept hitting things around it but never would hit the problem card but now that philosophy has changed, I'm guessing as time has gone on, because now we see more dramatic hits in the ban restricted list now, which is really good. But it's also kind of breeding a different issue in that whenever something is strong, the community is like, let's hit this now, as opposed to kind of like letting it flesh its way through okay. the system. <clears throat> so it's kind of like you don't want to err too far into listening to the community because mm -hmm. we can be a good influence, but then walls can be a bad influence so it kind of comes back to mm -hmm. our content creation that you want to have that balance and how you want to listen to the people because sometimes if you listen too much then you kind of start losing your way as mm -hmm. a game and a company because what everybody wants isn't always the same so if everybody wants to have cards impacted and hit and removed not everybody wants that because it also impacts other things like their own personal enjoyment and for our case in america or in the west the secondary market and things like that so oh, yeah. while it's important for Bushiro to listen and make impactful moves, you also got to make sure that you can't let, quote unquote, the inmates run the asylum. So we can't have too much power over what Bushiro is able to do. But, but they have definitely changed in terms of what they have been listening to us. And I do want them to do some more things personally. Like I would like them to do more of card reveals through content creators like they did with um, what was it? collection. Yeah, like with that, that was, cool. like, that was really cool. And I, <clears throat> that's something I've been wanting them to do for years because, as a person who follows Hearthstone a lot, I see how oh, yeah. Blizzard does that. For, like yeah. for all their, for all Blizzard misgivings as a company, but that's a tangent that we don't want to get into. <laughs> they do do some good things with their content creators and like passing them cards to reveal and like help grow the people around their game to make them personalities. And I wish that's something Butcher would do more of for. Um, Part content creator yeah. community. Like the clan selection coming up would have been a perfect opportunity to do it like the pre oh, collection. Oh god, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, would, that, would out. that would have been magic. <laughs> but uh, for me to add on or add on on the uh, proofs uh, thing, basically what he said is the same as my stance for us being uh, quote unquote influencers, because there's a good part and there's a bad part to it. As we have a responsibility to some extent to be the middleman between Bushrod as a company and the community as a whole. As Great way to we, put it. it. Because we try to listen to the community and 
voice their concerns as it's probably more re reasonable that they will the bush road sees our videos first and then maybe reacts to that to some extent like what chris said with the with what they did with the old competitive scene yes but at the same time that is a very powerful tool that we have but we also have the responsibility to be very careful that we don't make a fuss about every little nitpicky what you just explained mm -hmm. with uh, that maybe some people are crazy about a certain card and that they want to ban but that might not always be the correct way to go because once doing it once that might catalyst into something that it happens twice even faster and faster and faster mm -hmm. so being an influencer is an, it's amazing thing that it's uh, that it, that it exists in Vanguard, but at the same time, anybody that's in this position or wants to go into this route should always be very careful about every side of the story, about the positives and negative sides, and that's sometimes a very hard thing to balance. That's personally, I have made some mistakes, and a lot of people in our community has minor mistakes here and there over the years, and it's important that we learn from that and. It is a powerful tool, and I'm very glad that Bushrod actually is listening to us and is trying to do more and more and more with us as content creators, as influencers, and as a community as a whole. So, who knows? Maybe 2021 might not be as bad as 2020 for us all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> if you guys just knew, like, I'm a guy who loves Narukami. You know, Nari Samurai, all right? Um, but, um, <laughs> so... When I looked at it and saw when Vegas show came out, I was like, oh, man, this is going to top in tournaments. Tournaments are canceled. Yeah. I missed that life. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was so rough. I was just like, man, it, it, it was his moment. And he didn't, he, he was too rusty. He couldn't shine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that actually hey, Chris, brings. Do you want uh, to add something to this? Hmm? I felt like you, at one point, you were trying to add something. There was one thing, there's just one thing before we move on that I wanted to also talk about is that, like, I think the, like, content creators, like, I think Eric made a really good point about, like, you know, the, the fact that you have to be careful with, like, how much, like, what you say will affect people, even if it's a small amount of people, the fact that they're, you know, affected, it can spread to others, etc. And I think it's also interesting that, like, I, I feel like the amount of energy or, like, passion that, like, the content creators show for the game also re often can reflect on parts of the community, too. Like, I think, you know, Vanguard, so it's always been easy outside of this year because it's always like events to talk about. There's always hype going on. There's always like so much happening, like on top of just reveals. But this year has definitely felt like it's been a bit more of like on the back burner and there's like less hype outside of just, you know, reveals and like Japanese tournaments because in the West we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to ask, I guess in general, like to, to everyone here is like, how much do you feel that like, if do you notice that like if you show more passion towards something like whether it's like you know zero or the the general game itself or certain things do you feel that it reflects in the community because sometimes i notice that when there's like when there's less people posting or like there's sometimes drought periods where like for example for me personally like when the luard set came out and like it started wreaking havoc my personal motivation for the tcg kind of dipped a little bit and then it only went went up like quite recently but then you can notice like in your own comments sometimes like oh people are suddenly much more excited because you started talking about it again even though the same people you know didn't really say anything before that so do you guys notice those kind of things as well so you're talking about like burnout from like finding out about these new like meta kind of decks affecting like the overall um sort of yeah and, like the way that you project your own interest for the game does it affect your viewer base uh -oh. i think i think we got uh, or at least I, you just made me kind of realize and remember this but a lot, like a lot of times, whenever we make our uh, gameplay videos of new cards that came out, we get a lot of you know, comments, or not not as many, but a decent amount of comments going, "Oh, you shouldn't play this. You misplay here. What are you doing? You don't know how to play this. Not a good Narukami player. Not a good uh, banker, uh, or link joker player. Yada yada yada." Back and forth. And to us, it's like there's a lot of people that are coming to gameplay videos of ours, of anybody else's, looking for. What's the best deck I could take to a tournament and win? Where mm -hmm. a lot of times people are honestly forgetting that Vanguard is still a game. You don't have to build a deck to go to a tournament to win. You can build a deck and just play for fun and enjoy the game. So whenever we do our uh, gameplay videos, we try to just have fun, goof around, back and forth. And hopefully whenever we're having a good time, and I can see it in our comments, a lot of people are also going, man, I love you guys actually enjoying the game and bringing energy. And there was a period of time right before our burnout video where people in our comments started to notice, hey, you guys aren't having as much fun or are looking like you're stressed. or And it, you can see the actual thing projecting. So, And I think it's like yeah. a kind of reflection of like uh, the sets dropping back to back to back to back. 
And the community yeah. has probably also seen that. Like we're struggling with it a lot because you know we're getting so flooded with so much content to have to cover. But at the same time, I know the community is also like, man, I really don't I get to play my deck for maybe a couple weeks, and the next set's just bam right there. And mm-hmm. It's probably really causing a lot of burnout for that, just for the fact that they don't even get to play their deck before it's already updated from another meta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that actually is like a. I want to kind of add on to your question. So, like, why you guys are answering his? Um, would you say that it affects your overall like viewership, your subscribers? Like, do you see a drop or a decrease when um, something that the that Bushy Road brings out? Um, does it hurt you at all? The only time I think yes. it actually hurt was honestly probably around post banless Luard. Mm-hmm. Whenever the the meta was just you play Luard or nothing, and a lot of people just kind of stopped watching right then because there was nothing to really play other than Luard at the time. Yeah, our analytics are very straightforward in the sense of showing us how much popularity something has. Because mm-hmm. we play everything because of the way we do our content. We play mm-hmm. every single clan, every single card. Of course, we got our main clans that we're more passionate about, but we do everything. So uh, Bermuda gets leaked, we're doing Bermuda content. Uh, Link Joker gets leaked, we're doing Link Joker content, stuff like that. And then you put up a thumbnail of, oh, look, here's Altmaier versus DX. A lot of clicks, a lot of views. Everybody's clicking on it because everybody likes uh, uh, DX. Everybody kind of enjoys Altmaier. And then you post something like uh, Spike Brothers Rising Nova versus, let's say, something like Mercani. Doesn't get as many clicks. Still gets a decent amount. But you can see where the popularity, where the favorite units are, where people kind of go towards. Like Luard, when it popped up, we make a video on Luard, skyrocket it. Why would you gotta bring Ryzen Nova into this? He didn't see <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I want I I mean, to make the same example with Spike I mean, Brothers I mean, as well. I feel perfectly <laughs> attacked. Like, it's because we're not the the not it's from does. us. Nobody wants to listen to us. They want to listen to you. You know. <laughs> but for, for my uh, side to answer <laughs> the question, uh, I definitely see that happen this year. That there, the overall excitement of the game has been a lot less. I noticed certain commentators not commenting on my video anymore, like what uh, Top Deck Heroes said about certain people not commenting on their Let's Play videos because the competitive scene isn't really here anymore for this In year. The West in the west at least and i don't have really asian people or at least uh, japan people commenting on my personal videos mm-hmm. but i really see the difference in what type of persons are watching my videos and which people are watching certain videos and but i i do notice when i'm going into a more niche subject that isn't really about the latest releases or isn't about the newest hottest thing that's happened in the community when i do something that i really enjoy and really like i do see an optic in 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 the amount of people that commenting or what they comment they're more excited about it because it's it's different in what that's happening right now it's it's at least for them to see that there are still people out there enjoying the game even in this hard shift of time where it's really hard to say that you could really enjoy tgg that's somewhat competitive bound so i definitely see that 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 problem but as well the solution to it what you explained with the uh, when you talk about something that you really enjoy and that your energy basically goes through your video to your viewers i do i do experience that this is the last thing i want to add before i give uh, uh, other people to talk and shut up for a while uh (laughs) when we were uh, going through the first question i had this in my mind and wanted to say but i saw the flow of the conversation but a lot of times, like what I found, honestly, and what I've heard from a lot of other YouTubers, not just in our community, I'm talking YouTube in general, is like there is a weird thing that happens with content creators. It's when you make a video that you're passionate about and put time and effort in, a lot of times your, your viewers are not going to notice that. They're not going to see the amount of time you spend behind the scenes, editing, shooting, and all that. They're going to see a finished project. But somehow that just translates over people can feel when you've put so much effort in something and it just they can kind of sense it they can sense when you put uh love into a video and they can sense when you just made a video to make a video and it's crazy how that happens on youtube 100 percent. i definitely i definitely experienced that i i know what you expect what you're talking about and it's 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 the best thing that 
in, in, in times like this to utilize that as it's hard to make videos about uh, the latest hot things in Vanguard, especially with a meta that's kind of toxic that it was in the last couple of months with Luard running around and the latest ban hits, now Gurgrid going rampant. Oh. In, this, in this moment, I think it's the best time to make content that you want to make and that you really enjoy, as that's probably also what a lot of viewers w want to see at this moment, as it's really hard to do the usual thing, as we have said back to back to back, that everybody needs to buy if they want to keep in. There's no tournament, they cannot really play it, so why would they watch the same stuff that they would watch last year when there were the tournaments, when there were less releases, when things were a bit more organized? So it's definitely something that... It's it's weird how it works, like you explained, but I think it's something that's so it is something that a lot of viewers would want to see at this moment in not only in Vanguard, but you could say in all of the uh, in all of YouTube to some mm. extent. So uh oh mm -hmm. go right ahead, go right ahead. I just wanted to add on to all this conversation about um authenticity in the sense, because that's what viewers will ultimately care about. Is they don't really care that the coolest deck is the coolest deck. Obviously, they do. People are looking up how to build Luard and stuff because it, it's broken, right? <laughs> but when it comes to you and what your brand should be and how you should grow your channel, authenticity is number one. People will smell disauthentic from a mile away, and they will hate it. Mm -hmm. They will literally not watch you. They will devalue everything you say. They will never listen to you if you're not authentic. And making stuff that you actually care about is the best way to do that. Now, on adding to that point, I have done probably the least amount of TCG content out of all of us here. And the reason for that is because I authentically cannot play it in real life. I can't go to my locals and have fun with my friends while playing Vanguard, which if I was doing that, I'd make videos about it because I want to. I want to show that to the world of, look how much fun I'm having with Vanguard. I'm sure you're having it too. That's the idea. But because I can't do that, I don't make that content. I make a lot of zero content. I make a lot of discussion content about Vanguard, what I think Vanguard means to me and how much it matters because I know that come next year or come 10 years down the line, whatever it is, if Vanguard's still around, people are going to care about it. And having that connection to the game that I want to have, that I want to show people, is what's most important to me. And when I am going to tournaments again, oh, bet your bippy, you're going to be seeing videos about it, 100%. <laughs> you know, so, so I, think, I, think, I think the idea that people get burned out of Vanguard is a real thing. Mm -hmm. But what should matter to you isn't that they get burned out of it, it's if you do, right? And if mm -hmm. you need to take a break from it to make other kind of content that is authentic to you, that's what matters at the end of the day. You may not see as much success at first, but I promise you, it, if you stick to it and people will see and that new audience that you're seeing or just the diversity of it and you're marketing yourself properly, you'll find success all the time. Well, the so, best example to what you just said and to what Different Fight also explained is basically the video that we did together with the mm -hmm. old... Uh, anime fight. It's like it's super <laughs> authentic. Like it, it was us playing the game that we like, and it's also uh, where we could show our energy for our love for the game. And mm -hmm. where it's a really simple video to do, it performed quite well, honestly, beyond my expectation. As mm -hmm. it shows that people want to see us being us and what loving we Vanguard. Love loving Vanguard. A thing we could have done, and here's like a good example of what I'm talking about. We could have just done like. Oh, I'm going to play Luard. You're going to play Gurgit. Let's see if L Luard can stand to Gurgit's master, right? We could have made that video. That could have been a thing we did. But we didn't because it wasn't what authentic we wanted to do because in reality, mm -hmm. that's not going to serve us anything. I, I'm not going to go use that Luard deck to beat that Gurgit deck anytime soon. So it doesn't matter to me to test that right now. What matters to me is enjoying Vanguard. The best way to enjoy Vanguard is, is to enjoy the anime most of the time because I can always do that. And that's yeah. a great way to do it. But also card fighting because I really love <laughs> card fighting and I can't do it right now. It's one of those things you you want pe you want your viewers to sure come for the content, but stay for the people. Mm -hmm. So yes. we we've gotten kind of switched off between talking about the the enjoyment of Vanguard and also the competitive scene, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, this kind of made me think of a question, but mm -hmm. um, in kind of recent tournament results in like Japan and all that, we've gone like a lot of lower people playing premium, and like a lot of us saw that a lot of people left after. Um, G series turned into V series, and like they didn't like that. But um, would you say that, um, depending on the format, which one do you prefer, or do you feel like premium is still a very big format in your opinion to talk about in your content? In the West, it's huge. Yeah, exactly. In the West, it's huge. But like, it's far bigger in the West. But even still, like, there's a lot of negativity around it because there's like. The upper echelon stuff that's just far and away better than it's like if you're not playing insert thing here which i believe is like um 
darker regulars and yeah, yeah. Maybe, like maybe Neil Nectar still question mark. But Lou Ward like, still there. Don't be sleeping on Lou Ward. I can't believe like, 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 Lou Ward in there. <laughs> It's been a while. Hey, but like, time you're not playing like that. If you're not playing that like upper echelon stuff, like there's no point in dipping your toe in the premium because you're gonna just get ran over by these things. Because when it comes to legacy formats, if you it's like it's harder to balance those because there's just so many more powerful interactions that Bushro may not have intended, which is why they wanted to separate the two formats from each other. And if like that's why it's so negative and people like air more towards standard because Bushiro themselves like outside of a couple things here and there, seem to not want to put as much focus into balancing the precedent, premium. Yeah, the, they over, set the precedent of like yeah. premium is different. It's bad because that's where the bad stuff goes that we can't balance in regular standard. So if you want right. to play that, go ahead. But we're not going to support it as much. And like they'll hit the big stuff, but even then, like there's always going to as new cars come out. Since it's a legacy format, it's going to just be new stuff added to it continuously. Where there's going to be new stuff that you didn't intend to have happen. So there's always going to be like a new challenger to rise up. So. There's only so much that they can do without like splitting the format into a third, I guess, which could be something we see with overdress, depending on how that shakes up. But like, there's always going to be some negativity around premium, just because there's always something that's going to be super powerful that people don't want to deal with. But but <laughs> on the flip side too, it also have the dedicated player base that will love it, especially here in the West. People oh, love yeah. legacy formats here for sure, in terms of just playing them for fun or just going to actual event that's supported for it. Yeah, true that. With premium, it's like there's also I think a lot of the people that dislike it and like bark at it and are very loud about not liking it are also there's a lot of misinformation that goes around. Like I remember for the first like after the first half a year of premium, people were still crying about like Gize and stuff, and it was already like far <laughs> beyond irrelevant. <laughs> things like that. And it's just like there's so much in the misinformation, and the people like there's people that are just stubborn to push their point without really being open to learning and then you can't really get through to those people because they already have a pre a preconditioned idea that they're going to stick mm -hmm. to um premium is a really great format and i think mm -hmm. honestly like tier one premium like the best decks in premium like let's say right now as we're recording this you know it's they're great and if we had come like tournaments they would be topping all the time but like for me with premium the biggest enjoyment like i think some of the best vanguard you could ever play is tier two premium like tier two premium is like diverse as hell there's so much going on it's so much fun and especially because there's no tournament it's like what are you even being sweaty for you know that's kind of like what i tell people is like that kind of like get oh like start talking badly about premium like well you're not going to be playing in tournaments so why are you so yeah. concerned about you know like shaming it right now because it's like you know you can just pick up literally any clan almost and build something viable out of it and play with your friends that also do the same and then you're gonna have an amazing time mm -hmm. and like premium is great for that and i mean i personally i'm not a big fan of the fact that the format split in the first place i understand why they did and you know there's a lot that we can discuss about that um standard is a great format and i think it's you know it's both formats have their own pluses and minuses and standards now like the level of interactivity that card effects have um, in terms of like what you do on your own turn have are kind of, you know, they're not reaching like late G levels, but they're slowly, slowly creeping up there. And, you know, it feels much more like, you know, you're not just like turning cards sideways and passing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you have you have a lot more say in what you do. Um, and I do love standard for that. And the fact that it's also a very nice thing to just like you can just sit down, pick it up and play. There's no like you know you don't have to invest into it as much like mentally when you're sitting down and like if you want to like try playing something super technical and premium but i think like yeah like in the west premium is much more popular than in uh than in japan but it's still not as popular as standard i, I would say but the people that are loud about premium and share the love of premium are the ones that are pushing that and i think like if we had solomon here he's literally like the person <laughs> that carries the flag of premium, you know <laughs> he has the torch hey not gonna lie <laughs> we were trying to get him on but uh he wasn't answering my messages <laughs> You don't love us. You could have told me that. I, I could literally just get him in here right now. Yo, I'm afraid to message you guys. <laughs> like, Never be afraid to message me. Uh, I might not respond for a couple of days because I'm busy, but I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna lose my car because my charger broke. But I'll, 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 I'll find it. I'm sure. So, um, yeah, um, rest in peace, back. solemn. You know, ghosty. Right? Oh my God. We the wish you were here with us. Uh, oh kind of back, back off on that premium thing, like we. You watch our channel. We're standard only. We tried premium. It was like, oof. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah you, you bring that up. But, like, 
things I liked about premium was like the interaction on your opponent's turn, like something that like, oh, I'm getting attacked by your thing, like I, I can use the worst example, like Denial Griffin being like, oh yeah, let me just pop it, all right? But like for like other people, you Music had to do something. My ears. The, <laughs> the, wor the worst example was whenever we were playing before before Z uh, Zarzan got, got leaked, we tried uh, the Gear Chronicle, the whole going into uh, the extra three turns or whatever. We tested it out. And he, put, and he decided to be the smart one to throw it against Nurakami. And the worst part about that, you gotta tell the back. The worst part about that is five we head. Four, five head. We did like four games to practice to kind of get the uh, the deck lists and you know tech cards here and there. Kind of practice. It's like okay, I can stride. Hiya. I got enough uh, stuff on my board. I got my conditions. Swing. G guard. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then we keep testing, testing. It was like, you know what? It's going to happen. Press the button on record. And on the recording, the first game, the only game he did not have a heal in hand. I'm like, wait a minute. I, you, you're telling me I can do it now? You're telling me I can do my effect? <laughs> but it, we. We want to. We would love to do premium because, like, honestly, the reason we stopped doing premium is because of Zarzan. But the biggest thing is, like, again, the card pool. It, it, it's it is the card pool. It's the expectations. Like, if we do premium content, there's such a big card pool that almost everybody can say something different. Like, hey, you should try this. Hey, you should try this. Hey, you should try this. There's not the best straightforward way of going. Oh, look at this new premium stride they got leaked. Let's showcase it. And then someone's gonna go, oh, this would have been better, and this would have been better, and this would have been better, and you can just. Not to mention, like, especially for premium, like for standard, it's a little bit easier whenever you, they leak something like OTT, it's a little bit easier for us to go, all right, we're, this is the carpool OTT, these are some of the staples we know of, these are some of the good combos. Mm -hmm. Like a stride for, let's say, Murakumo drops. There's such a big carpool for Murakumo and premium, it's like mm -hmm. going through every single card, figuring out what's the best card to run with it if you don't have experience in the deck is like mm -hmm. overwhelming. Yeah, I would love that's, to play premium Messiah. You sit in front of me, and I got my Messiah deck in front of me. I'm go, yeah, let's do this shit. Oh, you mean um, <laughs> you, you mean time leap of locking, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, how many times is Vocal Geed gonna attack me? It's worse than Melum. <laughs> <laughs> Standard is oh, much easier to pick really up and play or plug and play. Like, every plan and every single card pool option is like. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you <laughs> if you stuck with premium, you're in a good spot. You're amazing. like if you love premium, go for it. If you're starting in standard and you want to go into premium, it's such a hard transition. Mm -hmm. Like the premium collections have done a great job of introducing strides that take your standard deck and go. All right, now you're premium. But at the same time, it's still just a big carpool, and you're like, oh my god, this exists. Oh my god, this exists. Oh, this can work. And then for people that were like, all right, I play G. Standard came here. All right, I dropped premium, and I'm only standard. For instance, me. <laughs> that that's us. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, we can go back into premium, but we're only doing the clans we know that we ended G with. There, right. we kind of kept up so far. Anything mm -hmm. else is like, damn, there, there, there's too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Early premium was great because selfishly, spikes were terrible in G era in terms of how I wanted <laughs> to play the clan. Like there was much oh, more. <laughs> You're like Hell Hardy oh, Turbo's boring. I'm gonna play this thing. I loved, I loved it. I like Hell Hardy is my homeboy. Like we go back like four flats. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm not a combo player at heart per se. I like putting things on board and smack you in the face with it. So when G came out or when V Air came out, it made um, a lot of stuff better for spikes, and that's where I won this thing from. And so shout outs to uh, early premium for that. But I'm still so proud of my, my my meme that I made back then. Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> 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 but it's totally like changed now because the carpool is so massive however it doesn't change the fact that premium is much more of an interesting format to play like i don't play it much anymore because I, I just haven't had the want to to keep up with it but mechanically it's different than standard is because as you guys talked about like standard is very like you pick up you put in new cards here slap on the thing turn things sideways in premium there's more things to have to worry about like oh man if i rise to grade three here do I just die because my opponent has some crazy combo that's going to just take me from one damage to dead? Or 
do I have the ability to be aggressive here? Like, if they damage deny me, do I just lose the game because I can't do my things on my following turn? So mechanically, there's much more to think about, which probably why premium seems a lot over a lot more overwhelming than standard does because you don't have to yeah. worry about like counterplay mechanics like that currently in standard to a degree there is some of it here and there but it's not such a massive degree as it would be in premium there's also a thing that i i wanted to say with premium is that like we often because like with the you know the the content creators and you know we were we dabble in the competitive side of things a lot and then we'll talk about that a lot but then like a lot of the the viewer base might be more casually based and you know they're more just like they just want to pick it up and play and you know there's often like it might be a little bit daunting where it's like you know you watch like solemn's road to worlds and he's like literally his entire winning strategy is like yeah you cannot attack literally ever if you want to win <laughs> which goes completely against vanguard and for the casual player base it's like no that's not how i want to enjoy the game like that's that's not fun for me and that kind of like reaction does come up or like the whole idea that against certain decks like you literally cannot swing after you're in after a certain stage because they g guard once and there you go they opened up their entire line of play for next turn and you're dead mm -hmm. but the thing is is that that is like the top percent the super sweaty like hyper competitive <laughs> side of premium, which is like top eight bcs every single time and goes to worlds every single year premium isn't all just being super sweaty and super competitive it's also just like you know also being able to plug and play your decks like you don't have to always be like trying to outplay each other and like playing to like the most optimized play and like most maximized best way to play it sometimes it's fine to also just you know kind of pick it up and play and i've noticed that when i go to bcs sometimes like i'll spend time play testing with you know like people that you know, show up at the top eight all the time, and then we think of all these little optimizations, and like, you know, like, oh, what if my opponent doesn't give me this damage, and then I can't do this, and this, and this, and this, but I can do this, and this. But then you sit down for BCS, and my opponent gave me two damage, or three damage, yeah. I can do yeah. this, this, and this, and they're dead. You know, you know, but it's like, those kind of things don't come up, because the casual player, he just wants to, you know, sit down and play Vanguard. But I think it's because the content creators often, like, push that, like, push that, like, very tryhardy side of the game, it kind of like reflects on the players, and they're like, I don't want to play this, it's too sweaty. You, know, the mm -hmm. you just reminded me of one of the best premium games I've ever had, one of the funnest ones. About a year and a half ago, I sat down with one of my friends, and we were like, you know, let's try premium with some of this. You know? So I think it was even at the beginning of V uh, and, and the G, and he's sitting on across me with an arms deck, and I'm battling by my side, and I'm like, all right, let's go. A couple of turns in, I'm like, I'm, I'm I'm guarding for my life. I'm like, I need to live, I need to live. And I just see him on the other side, like, how many cards did he you got? And he goes, uh, 22. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that was like, We're having show. fun. And I'm like, I lived long enough. Stride. Shuffle on back. Grab five. <laughs> <laughs> like, so... it's that, those steps of fun interactions. Mm -hmm. And I, I will never forget that game. It was so fun. It was just like, Intensity, like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you want something like that I find very ironic right now is that there's a lot of complaints going on about premium because of all the new things that are coming out for it. But this whole entire year, 2020, has been ironically the best year to get into premium because the barrier <laughs> to entry is like minimal because of card single prices. Like hmm. you can buy the entire premium collection for 20 bucks, like no cap, like literally, you can buy a, a place of every card for 20 bucks, like it's weird. Uh, and then there's like this idea that. There are no tournaments for it on a competitive level in the West. And so if you've always been, like, intimidated by premium and, like, the amount of interactions, the amount of cards in it, and that's why you don't play it, now is the best time because there's no barrier to entry and there's literally no consequence for failure. It's not like you're going to your BCS in a month and you're like, I can't I can't play the competitive format I've never played it before. No, you have, mm. like, literally an entire year, maybe a year plus until events actually happen again that matter. So there's no point in you actually being all sweaty all the time. You just have, you you just need to care about the game and have some fun for it at first. And if you want to be competitive, you'll now have the mindset of the player in premium to respond accordingly to what people are playing in the future. And then you can grow and make your own experience your own, and not necessarily what you want it to be, or sorry, what you thought it was should what you thought it should be. So I brought I up part. Like premium. <laughs> <laughs> so I do love premium, dude. I have my Isabels right here. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's I'm go over here. Just play premium. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought up that question because, like, um, when you look at the premium format in comparison to standard, right? Premium format kind of resembles most other formats, um, kind of similar to like how Yu-Gi-Oh's formatting is, right? Because when they Legacy. they Eternal. yeah yeah, but when they show a deck 
um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? They incorporate cards that like haven't been used in forever. Like um, they make reprints of it, but the they reuse cards like Solomon Judgment. There's things that just don't leave. Like um, if Monster it wasn't Reborn. banned, yeah, Monster Reborn, they brought that back, right? But in right, Gecky. Yeah, exactly, right? But in Vanguard and Standard, we kind of get like it's we're always showcasing the next new cards that come out. There's very few cards that make it and continue on, right? But in Premium, we still kind of like touch all the old cards, right? I I I just overall feel like y- you can be a little bit more like um creative with like your deck profiles in a sense in Premium, but in Standard, I feel like I'll be showcasing the same or the new cards each time like I might as well do a review on the box. You get me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's kind of like how I'm guess I'm I don't know if I'm accurate here, but with the way they try to sell the sets, they kind of want the new stuff to either supersede or you can take the strongest of the new stuff and plug it into an old deck and you can still kind of incorporate some of the older stuff with it. But they since their business to sell the cars, they need to make it flashy enough and strong enough to where you just can't like ignore this entirely and just keep playing the old thing you were playing before. So in the case of Spikes, as I want to say, like the Bull Spike era stuff was pretty bad. However, New Rise of Nova comes out and it makes Bull Spike like a quintessential thing you must have. So by him existing, it buffed up the old stuff. So he kind of put the two things together. And that's kind of what Bushro seemingly has been wanting to do with the the new expansions that they put out here and there. They don't want you to keep playing the old stuff, otherwise they're not going to make the money because exactly. they have to make it. So they, they want you to keep doing it. However, in the case of Premium, some of the old stuff like would just be very strong with the new stuff in general, so you can still much more easily merge the two things together. Mm-hmm. So that's where it kind of comes into. So they want you to buy the new stuff to use it for your standard stuff, and then see kind of where it falls into place in Premium. I mm-hmm. like the um... secondary market's going to make bank on the old stuff. <laughs> oh, a lot of the time too. So uh, I love the example, but um, but just to let everyone know, we're not sponsored by Spike Brothers. Okay. <laughs> Actually, proof of a really interesting example that kind of talks about like what I think standard is designed for is it's designed so Bushy Road can create a format where they have full control over what these decks can do, and so they can understand like, oh, we're not going to break this format. This is going to be healthy. You guys are going to enjoy it. There's going to be really cool things that you can use to become competitive. Like that Bull Spike combo that, you, that with Rising Nova is a really good example of this. Like Bull Spike wasn't good when he came out, right? It wasn't the card that you played in fights at the time. But then Rising Nova came out and made it broken, right? And so the idea, I think, from Bushiroad side of things, their perspective was, oh, we always knew Rising Nova was going to come out. But we brought out Bull Spike first because we just had to. Releasing both at once was just too obvious and would have made that one set too impactful. And now, while this one might not be impactful now, who's to say it won't matter later? So that means, like, even though your support, like, maybe right now isn't as cool as you maybe think it is, I think Bush Road has an idea for where every single clan should be going in standard. And that could mean that it's going to eventually get to a point where those clans are viable and more viable than maybe you think. So if your clan isn't getting that much support right now, don't have faith, maybe. Because I think standard is a very planned thing and they know exactly what's going to be happening for it. Uh, for like the next year at least to come. Uh, Steven, I, mean, I would I, like to argue. <laughs> I think Mega Colony one's your number. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so, 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 as, as an actual Bugs boy, I love Bugs, okay? Straight up. I will never not love Bugs. Ghidorah's great. Cool card. Love it. Cradle's it's, awesome. I'll, I'll enjoy it's it. It's D-Clan that has no one direction in Vanguard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a good... Not Okay, no one's perfect, guys. They can't do it all the same. You but I, you, know what, you enjoy too. Bugs, you'll always enjoy Bugs. So don't worry about it. Genesis so, has been a, a tragic identity for the last couple years it's, oh. itself. Yeah. Extra Post was a fun idea. Kind of. They were fun. They were a fun introduction. Got... But I think it was actually a divergence from what they should have been doing, which was like more just generic Himiko yeah. uh, and like Fenrir stuff. But, so you we know. got Himiko, then we got Poets, and then we got Divine Gauge stuff, and then it, it doesn't know where it wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's like one clear direction for every single deck, but I do think like the idea is that all the support in the clan gives you uh, like if you want to go Astro Poets, you'll know what you should be doing. If you want to go generic Genesis, you'll know where you're going kind of a thing, I think. It's more my point. Not like everything's viable all the time. No, that's not. That That, that, that can't sustain. Uh, a, a format where everything is the best means nothing's the best, right? Mm-hmm. So bouncing off the Rising Nova thing that uh, True Champion Steven said, right? Um, this is actually like a question toward like your content, but uh, mm-hmm. we've come to a point where we talk about the same cards now right we got the reboot we're talking about things we the most recent thing we talk about is chaos breaker right like that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um do you feel like it's time that we see 
new cards, new units, things that we haven't seen before. That should have been Vieira. It should have been. I hate nostalgia so much. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> I hate Jet Wonnery. I hate Dark Magician. Please just give me new shit. I don't care about the old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like and it's time. Like, examples like, I, I, I wouldn't count Vanquisher because he says full Bronto, right? But it's still Vanquisher, right? But um, <laughs> it's it's a different sparking. It's, it's the same. That's Cohen. It's a different yeah. Sohan. Like, yeah. There's the mm. same. It's Blade like, Master. I, it's Titan. I, it's Overlord. It's all the same. I, I stuff. agree. Yeah. I agree with different fight. It's time for something else. We need to do something else. I am happy that at least our Gear Chronicle card in that Premium Plus is a brand new unit. Uh. We get at least <laughs> a brand new unit. I'll also, like, another thing is that they at least. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I will say though, um, the best part of the reboot, the reboot or whatever, is honestly the. Sh- Arc. Just for the simple fact that we actually saw new stuff, Astral Poets, yeah. God Hand, Isabel, uh, my Kamsa queen, Hanza, and it was the best part of it, honestly. Isabel, and then, yeah. and then we went back into the G boot, and I was like, man, I kind of miss seeing all this new stuff. Like it was actually refreshing to actually see. New hey stuff. now, we're getting a new Hanzo. <laughs> hey now, we're getting a new Malakith. Hey now, <laughs> but Overdressed, honestly, I'm, I'm really excited for this for the fact that like, oh, it's just gonna be hopefully just a whole wipe and a whole new. Yeah, 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 I think everyone's expecting that, and I think if anything, it shows that because even though like the V series was all about just like nostalgia pandering and sort of like preying on that, like oh you like this, well it's back now, you know that kind of feeling. Um, I'm glad that throughout V series they managed to introduce at least like during the Shinemon arc they managed to introduce new archetypes, new units, and new designs. I was like this is really dope. Like if not the the R and D department, but if the people like in charge of designing the like actual art and like the design design of those archetypes stays for Overdress, I'll be really happy. Like those are some clean ass designs, and I really oh, want to yeah. see that. They look good. Man, they look pretty, pretty, pretty good. good. When they saw grade five, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got I got a weird hot take that I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with this, but here's like a little hot take. I feel like Vanguard as a game would not have legacy support, which is like what Dark Magician stuff is in Yu-Gi-Oh. We wouldn't have that kind of stuff all the time if Crossride never existed. Because in my opinion, the idea of making Overlord the next or making Blaster Blade the whatever or continuing all this stuff came about because they built it into the mechanics of the game. And therefore, those clans became that identity and not necessarily... I mean, I mean, Chris had a video, literally, what is Kagero? I only know Overlord, you know what I mean? Like, uh, if they made Kagero support that wasn't Overlord or wasn't stuff that we've seen before, it just wouldn't make sense to us as players, yeah. right? It'd be I, I don't, agree. So, I don't like, agree because mm. they built the idea that you have this one specific unit that you identify with into the very core of the game as mm-hmm. your avatar. Mm-hmm. And right. so since they attach these avatars to characters as opposed mm-hmm. to having these cars exist within their own clan, that's mm-hmm. kind of where it's come from. So as you see this person come back, as in the case of Luard, you're like, oh, such and such comes back. That means we're going to get new Luard support. So they kind of mm-hmm. attach these character identities to the character, which kind mm-hmm. of feeds into my whole idea that, well, if you guys know me or have seen me in my Discord, how much I talk about how much I hate that they tie support directly to the anime. Mm-hmm. So as you see these characters come back and prominently are showcased, that means they're going to be getting new cards for that particular archetype in mm-hmm. question. So since they kind of tied in like clan identity and avatar into the very fabric of Vanguard, as these cards and characters make their way into the anime, these cards are going to keep getting support, not necessarily from cross ride, but just because of the fact that, you know, that person a means card, a put that together, mm-hmm. new support is coming your way. And that's where it comes from, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you thing you bring that up. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go right ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Real quick trivia question: How many people can uh, na- uh, give me the number of different blaster blades that exist? Seven. <laughs> Made a video about it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> called the two champion for a reason. I, I, <laughs> they literally have Blaster Blade trivia as a video, man. We wait, wait, about? are you kidding? Blaster Blade burst, bro. Manga only. Ties are with OG Avatar. Right. Bro, I'm in love. I'm in are you counting the three different Blaster Javelins? Like Lacrosse, uh, the Royal Bowser one? The- <laughs> He's Blaster Blade, not not those fake blasters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so... um. I like uh, so like I totally understand where proof is coming from. Where like how the show ties in this idea of we should assign ourselves to a card and love that card forever. That's where a lot of clan dedication comes from. I feel like, um, but a thing that I feel like is the R and D side of things is that there's been this precedent that cards work together within clans, which is what synergy is. But this idea that you don't support the clan, you support this unit, 
right? That's where this yeah. legacy support, I think, comes from. And that's only possible, I think, via decks like Overlord or decks like Blaster Blade being really big and having those cross-ride or those things. And obviously, synergy should exist. There should be cards that work together, obviously. But in the sense of specific cards that will always get new support forever as what that clan's identity now becomes, that to me is, I think, where the problem of like nostalgia pandering comes in because it feels like all they're doing nowadays is doing that. And I think the point of like the anime being tied into stuff, the current V-Series stuff, there's no anime characters playing this. Like, I know... If, if Kazuma was in the anime, he'd be playing the new Luard stuff, obviously. But it's not like we knew that was going to happen. It's just like, oh, it's what they decided to do. They like bring him back Luard for no reason, which I, I feel like is just the idea that there is this Luard card that we must support in Shadow Paladins because we have to, because we set the precedent earlier with having another Luard come out in G-Era. We could have just had the one Luard drag heart. We never needed that, that edgy oh, boy. We didn't need him. <laughs> we didn't need him. We needed regular boy. That was it. So there's, one thing I don't, there's one thing I don't understand then. You got the end and the X come back in V era, and they're mm -hmm. complete nostalgia factors because like Stan, Stan, Stan. You only need the Vanguard. Mm -hmm. What then happened to Gallup? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about Gallup. Gallup has yet to be printed in the V series. He it has to be printed. Printed. <laughs> That's a fake. It's a phony. That's zeal in disguise. That's zeal. <laughs> oh my God! Did not bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, different fight. Uh, oh, I was I was this close note? after I saw that they revealed Z, I was just like, oh my god. I on a real note though, on a real note, like I got over that in a day and I was like, oh you know, it's cool, Zeal, whatever. But there are actually people like mm -hmm. I've seen online that are like, I literally I want to quit Vanguard, I can't get over it, it's been two weeks, I'm right. still not over Zeal being I'm like, why are you so dramatic? It's just a game. Like right. there's literally <laughs> people that I've seen there's actually someone that I saw that fell into depression because Zeal got announced. And I was like, are you serious? Like, how can you be taking this so seriously? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love DP more than anything. And even mm -hmm. for me, it's like, it's just a game, you know, this is, these are just decisions of a company. So just message to the people at home, don't, don't get too hung up over <laughs> being That's revealed. That's the education thing that we're oh. talking about, you know, it's like they've assigned themselves. Their identity is Dikeyser. Their identity is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overlord. If they don't get that support, they feel attacked. And I'm like, no, you don't. Don't Guys. worry about it. Deal's awesome, too. Cool. We got we got 24 yeah. cults here, all right? 24 clans, all right? I mean, we literally have a panel that's called Clan Dedication, and it's all Aqua Force. <laughs> it's 27. You forget Tokorumbu, um, Bang Dream, and the Mask Collection. Don't forget. We don't care about you. <laughs> They ain't nobody. <laughs> oh, and, and that magical world one that was in the manga only and never came out. <laughs> I think uh, Eric has something to say. Yeah, but to mm -hmm. add on what Different Fight said, I had I had the exact same experience when they, um, I believe when they announced Luart or some other clan that copied Gear Chronicles mechanic. I made the joke of, how can Bushiro do this to me? They ripping off Gear Chronicle, they gave us trash and make this better for everything. But it's clear it was a joke. But there are definitely people that take this too, too, too serious to some extent. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still a card game. If the company makes a decision, like, if they want to give a certain thing to a clan and not give a certain thing... So be it. Like, we right. cannot really change that. And it's something that we has, have to accept, but it's still just cardboard. I love exactly. the mind experiment. Here's a great mind experiment for people at home. I, I, want, I want you to imagine a world where you could mix attributes and Vanguard. I want to know if you would have, instead of clan dedication, you would have combo dedication. Like, oh, I love when I use Luard and Overlord together. Those are my homies, right? Like, I don't, like, I don't, like, the idea of, like, a none, like, I don't Your understand why. For sure. um, <laughs> exactly. I love how like the clan is designed and like what it does for the game and like how they actually design around it, but it does create a lot of plot holes and becomes a lot of an issues in terms of like what we feel our clan deserves. And I'm like, I don't think that's the question. It's more like what does Bushy Road give us and then what do we do with that? That is where the real value will come in and I feel like a lot of people like mistake that because they're like, I wanna have what Kagura has and they're like, Well then play Kagura, right? Like well, mm -hmm. you're not willing to do that. So I like so, I mean, you're wearing your gear shirt right now. So, like, clan dedication <laughs> is, like, a real thing. And I, I understand, like, um, where Bushy Road comes from as a company for doing the pandering because they know we love these cards, thus we will buy these cards if they make them. Yeah. And that is the yeah. end, like, that is the penultimate. Like, that is the reason why they do it. But in terms of, like, how it started, I don't think it was like that. I, Man, I'm the I, think it, I, think it's always, I think it's always been like that with mm -hmm. the, because they kind of, Again, they kind of tied it into the, like the whole notion of the anime from the very beginning. Like, mm -hmm. this is your unit, and this mm -hmm. unit is tied to this clan here. So, to play this unit, you must play so that clan. Yeah. yeah, yeah so you, you know what's even worse than that? 
Whenever you, when it, you, get, you got people that, oh, I didn't get my unit, I'm going to stop playing. Which even yeah. worse than that, it was when people see, oh, Chaos Breaker's back. Well, oh, goodbye, game. <laughs> <laughs> that's just normal, like, oh, that's broken. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, just, P- that's PTSD. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Seeing that Chaos Breaker and two infinite zeros on rear guard, you're like, oh, God. I've seen this thing <laughs> once before. <laughs> um, but yeah, now as we pull ourselves back to like um, our style of content, because um, right. that was a really good c- discussion each, on each being an influencer, Bushy Road, and, and things like that. Our content, you know, like, <laughs> like like our opinions are shaped by these things that exist. Right? Yeah, that influences our content. So like, it matters. It's an important conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Excusing our tangents. <laughs> Not, bro, tangents are great, man. Like, they wanted to hear this. Crap. We said it. <laughs> Um, how would you advise someone to find their style of content when starting out as a YouTuber? Oh, know yourself and like know know what your strengths and weaknesses are and know the type of content that you would watch and see if you would like to put that out there for the people to see. Like, and for don't me, be afraid to try. Honestly, a lot of people get discouraged of maybe that's not going to be good enough or maybe it's not going to just try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, to the next thing. Keep mm-hmm. just trying. And then also be comfortable with yourself as presenting. Like, I know a lot of this comes from, like, doing it, but I'm more of a laid-back person, and I kind of let that come through with the way I communicate. I try not to raise my voice and try not to be super animated to a a degree, and that kind of comes through my videos. Mm -hmm. And to me, that kind of worried me to make make me think that people might find me boring to a point. So every now and again, like, I try to bring in out more of my personality that I don't normally show. And I think it comes through, and it's kind of just having a comfort level with yourself to know that, hey, this is me, and here it is for you to consume as a YouTube personality. Adding on to that, like, it goes back to, like, this idea that I think the most important thing always is is authenticity. And it, Sorry, yeah, that's the word. Like, you need to be authentic with who you are, and if you're not, people will see that, and you won't get any success anyway. So just trust that you know who you are, what you like to do. Try doing that at first. And if you want to branch out and take a risk because you're feeling like, hey, that's a cool thing. I want to get into that. Hey, that's the thing people are, other, other people are doing. They're finding success. I like that. I want to do that too. Then do it. And the second thing is stop seeking external validation. Stop it. Stop asking people, is this a good idea? Should I do this? If, you, if you're asking yourself that and you can't even answer the question, you shouldn't do it in the first place. Right? Like You need to not be afraid to get in there and fail because that's how you're actually going to learn. Right. I've been making content for two years. I've, I, I'm on and off for like the past seven months, actually. I've actually started seeing some, some success. And the real way I found that was just to stop trying to make everything work. When I first started, I had five videos prepared, scheduled before I posted anything. Because I'm like, I'm going to go big. Nothing. Everyone fails when they first start. Don't be afraid to mm-hmm. fail so you can get better. And stop trying to find external validation before you even do it. Like you must do it, and then you can get the validation by your comments, by your likes, by all the analytics we've talked about, and then your own personal value of what you like about your content. You can work on yourself, work on it, and get better. Don't hesitate to start because you're afraid, and don't try and solve that like fear by trying to get validation because you just won't get it, and it won't help you. It'll hurt you. I kind of love that answer, but um, I feel like there's a script in front of him. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I, my, uh, you guys are over here, and I, I was looking dead in Eric's eyes when I was doing that. So, to make it short, sweet, and simple, just be you, be happy, enjoy what you're doing. It honestly is going to take it probably at least a year of just dedication and keep going you just gotta kind of rough it out yeah no, that's if you get lucky yeah and if mm-hmm. just rough it out and if you're being you and you're being happy and you're enjoying yourself it they will come mm-hmm. but there's some content creators that just keep doing it for a year and they hit uh, gold and they keep going and start growing there's some other content creators that keep doing it for like four or five maybe six years don't see any results and then finally start going up mm-hmm. you just gotta mm-hmm. stick with it like it's not gonna be over and overnight first advance is key I made a video. I'm a star now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. It's yeah tough exactly, exactly. Because like you're not going to get success in the first couple of videos, so then a lot of people get sad about that. Like, oh, they're not like they're not, not watching me. They don't like me. What am I doing it's wrong? Et cetera, problem. et cetera. But the key is to like, keep keep grinding, keep churning, like keep putting out content that you will like, and have like have more of an idea where you want to go, not necessarily what you want to do for like the first two or three videos. Because then once that's exhausted, like what's next that's what's going to people are going to be seeing like what are you going to be doing after that and, and a lot of a lot of it's luck like it's timing like i have mm-hmm. like key seminal moments in my channel where i like i know like people saw it and like my channel grew because of it 
And like some of it is timings, but and you have to like you're not gonna get to that timing if you're not producing and putting things out there. And the real like is gonna put a lot of people on the map. <laughs> <laughs> and the real thing that like I feel like we've been talking a lot about is is that idea of like valuing yourself and valuing what it is you're doing and like liking what it is you're making because that helps with your overall motivation because you will fail a lot and it's going to be hard to keep going in spite of all that failure in spite of just like not being where you want to be let's let, let's not say failure so much let's say just not where no you want to be it's hard just to keep going and keep going and keep going because i can understand that's not a thing we want to do people don't like doing stuff that's not working the, doing stuff that you like will motivate you to keep doing it even though it's hard even though you're not really finding the success you want to and then eventually if you're being authentic if you're finding value if you're putting in the architectural things that you need to do just to succeed on youtube i promise you more often than not you will get some semblance of success and then you can go from there about what you want to actually build and make your own experience now for me i always if when somebody asks me this question about their advice to want to start i always give a two-parter of an answer one the important part is that if you want to make videos and you want to do it seriously then the answer to the question do you like videos or do you like making videos need to be yes if the answer is no or the or the actual underlying reason is that you want to have fame numbers money or that things if that if that's the real purpose then it's probably not advisable to Banger, make. Not the game for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no Even YouTube in general is also not really that that smart to do because in the beginning year, maybe multiple years, you will fail. You will get hardly any views. You will hardly get anything. But you will put a lot of work and a lot of time in your videos. But if you like making videos and you really enjoy them, you don't mind because you enjoy your time doing this. Now, the second part is advice if you if I want to give ex actual advice and maybe grow in your channel or giving some insight of where you should start. If you want to do it in Vanguard, a good tip, and I believe Solom also gave this tip in one of his videos, try to look in the rest of the community. What do I make as videos? What, do, what does Different Vibe make as video? What does the, the Topic Hero make as videos? Search between their most liked videos, their best viewed videos, and maybe even search outside of our community. Go into Magic, go into Hearthstone, go into Pokemon, whatever, and get a taste of what type of videos people watch, what type of videos people enjoy, and then not pick out the videos that gets the best views. Pick out the videos that are popular, but you also like to make. Because it's still yeah. important that you like to make those videos. Because if you do not like them, you get to the point that Steven has tried to say the authenticity isn't there. And people will catch on up on that. And they probably will not like your videos or not watch it in the first place. Or they so won't value what you say or do. Yeah, exactly. So it's very important that you like making videos in the first place. And then try to explore different areas to have an understanding maybe what type of videos works best for you. Literally, that's how the trivia series came to being was I saw someone do that for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was like, I want to do that for Vanguard so badly. <laughs> I made it. And I was like, is, I made it first. And then I was like, is this video good? And the answer was yes. So I posted it. Boom. Done. <laughs> yeah, I like that, that basically it's, I mean, everyone's been saying more or less like similar stuff that I would also speak about. But the best way to also like, you know, some people, you know, I tell them also like, you know, if you're going to be going into content, it's like, do you like it? And also, you know, then they, they ask more stuff. And it's like, you know, the tip usually give is like, oh, just be yourself, present yourself, who you are as a person, and, you know, put your sort of heart into it. But at the same time, there's some people that go like, oh, I'm not really sure what that even is. Like, I want to make videos, but not try to present myself. And I think, again, it's like, the big tip is to who do you enjoy watching? And then, you know, you can even to an extent, like, be inspired, but by what your favorite creator do. Like, I plenty of times in the years that I've been doing this, there'll be times where I discover a new YouTuber, whether it's in Vanguard or in a different game or in different whatever. And I'll be so inspired by like their editing style. I'll be like, wait, I can do that too. And then I'll like start editing like them or like I'll watch some content from a different card game or something. And I'll be like, wait, nobody's covered this. And like you said, with the trivia series, like there's been plenty of times where I was like, okay, they're doing this in Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm just going to do it in Vanguard. Like, oh, they're doing this in Pokemon. I'll just do it in, in, in Vanguard. And so it's perfectly fine to, I don't want to say like copy, but it's fine to be inspired by what other people are doing. And even how like their mannerisms to an extent, like, you know, while still keeping your touch on it. Like the way I present myself in, in my videos is a fusion of myself and also like all the inspirations I've taken throughout the years. And that's completely normal. I think it's completely fine to be inspired by others. And that will probably help you in how you present yourself and are able to deliver the best kind of like, I don't know, 
the best kind of atmosphere for your viewers as well. And so I don't want to just repeat the same stuff that you guys were saying. Like there's a lot of similar advice in terms of just like what it is you should be doing, but there's not a lot of advice in just like how to actually do it. You know, that's like yeah, the architectural yeah, yeah. things you have to figure out for yourself. Like the being problem, you yeah. in a video is it, it can be different than who you actually are. It doesn't have to be. If you're yeah. an awesome personality, you like who you are. If you're comfortable talking, just do it. That's who you are. If you're not and you need to kind of learn how to do that, take inspiration from theirs. Or if you can't do it at all, you can't even speak, it's still possible to make content. I mean, W Slasher literally <laughs> <protected speech. Yeah, laughs> yeah. That's what oh, he does. Oh. Right? Like, like, there's so many formulas for success that there's no like one thing we could tell you on how, on how you should do something. You need to figure out that out for yourself. And if how you are on stream or how, are, or how you are in a video is different than who you are in, a, in real life, that's okay. But if it's still like a thing you're trying to do and a thing you're authentically being, people won't care. Mm. To add on that, like, like if you try and come on a video and be like, "What's going on, Logan Callers? Let's talk about Vanguard." <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? Like I'm not saying Never. Like, like do what works for you, but also don't be afraid to discover who your personality is actually going to be. No, yeah, yeah, just don't, don't come in like a Mr. Beast guy. guy and be like, "All right, ten thousand dollars are on the line in this Vanguard tournament. You can't use any triggers at all. Go in." So what? Uh, <laughs> it's on the camera when the next band list hits. <laughs> like, do do let's do a YouTube content creator challenge. The challenge. Go look at your first five videos. Oh, don't I do that every time. <laughs> I watched them on stream. I, did that I watched them on stream, I did that on stream yesterday because I, I I failed at a Yu-Gi-Oh speed run and we were like just chilling out and I was like, well, well I failed. So what, what am I gonna do for like twenty minutes? Let's look at my YouTube channel for five seconds and let's like, talk about it. <laughs> I, like, mean, I did that a, a few that months ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I was gonna just do a little tangent story. <laughs> <laughs> like to add uh, on what you know, on what um, Philip says, it basically is what it is. Like you're gonna fail in the beginning, and don't expect your first video to be your best video. Like if we go back to our very first videos or the videos in the first couple of years, probably we all gonna cringe about it because it's really bad. Either the editing is bad. Maybe we talk very incohesively. In my case, my English is even worse than it is right now. So I can't even understand my great. Thing. Same. So, so your first videos are always going to be bad, but you're going to evolve over the course of doing it every, every single time. It's basically the same example of what you always go when you finish college and you want to go to work and you apply to a job. They say, well, you don't have job experience, so we're not hiring you. But how can I get job experience if nobody's hiring me? This same back and forth happens with YouTube because your videos won't be good unless you're going to make videos. But if I don't make videos, they're not going to be good. So it's basically put into work, doing over and over again every single time, keep failing, try something new. And at some point, not only your video quality will improve, but you as a presenter or a personality or as a person will improve while doing that. Mm -hmm. So speaking about One your more. first videos, I'm um, sorry. Do you still have that fight table? Uh, I, I have it physically still living like, laying around, but it isn't further than it was at <laughs> then. Those are the that cause you goosebumps when people ask about it. It's just like, oh no, they asked again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm you... like, no, don't let me explain I, it. I have the exact same thing. Like when people are like, what's the next how to play? Like, oh, oh, <laughs> how to play <laughs> Hey, Moon. Hey, 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 hey. When's the next uh, meta and sketch video? Well, if the next band list is good, then maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> At the That's time the of recording, you do not know the next restriction list. <laughs> <laughs> Watch all the comments in this video being like, guys, did you hear Kurgi got hit? We heard that or whatever. Yeah. Nah, it was Percival. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I wanted to add one more thing. That's like, um, if you're really planning to do this seriously and like you really are concerned about growth and stuff as well, like once you sort out everything else that we've talked about, one thing that will be save you time is uh, study the algorithm. Like, it's not doesn't take that long. Just like watch some good videos that explain it. Understanding the algorithm will help you not make mistakes. Let's say. And YouTube is a very punishing beast, and it will judge you for very different things. And suddenly your subs don't see your content and all that kind of stuff. Because I've had plenty of people come up to me in the past where they do content and they're like, like, you know, I do this, 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 and my sub doesn't reach anyone. And I ask them, okay, well, do you do this, this, and this thing that usually the algorithm appreciates? They're like, no. And I'm like, you know, if 
if you take a little bit of time to learn about the YouTube algorithm, it'll really help you. And as much as like, I absolutely hate the algorithm, it had to like, when I started, it didn't really exist or like it existed, but nowhere near as dominantly as it does now. Yeah. And having to, like, transform, having to transform everything I was doing in order to fit the algorithm was such a pain, but it will really save you time. Like that's the one thing I can I add to everything. Do you have a link? Hey, can I borrow that? <laughs> oh man, I, I wish. That thing, cause there's one thing that we did, especially whenever we introduced proxy play, that boosted the amount of people watching and all of it. Is it also depends on the content, of course. But we found that having a schedule of when your videos go out helps mm -hmm. a lot because your then your viewers can go, oh, it's a Wednesday. There's a new video coming out. Let me go check it out. Instead of like, it does depend on the content. Like if your content can do a schedule, I suggest doing it. But if you're making like sketches or small films or, or like that. Like News reactions. Or Vanguard, mm -hmm. whatever you, you find. Like then a schedule can't apply. Because you're going to take X amount of time to do a video. You can't say, oh, on this day it's coming out and I'm going to do it every single time on this exact day. It can't fit. But for stuff like... Uh, Talk, uh, talking after a stream, uh, our proxy plays, anything like that, having a schedule and ha having your viewers know, oh, a stream happened. Tomorrow they're going to do this. Mm. Looking forward to it. A thing I kind of want to add on to that is that I have a firm belief that this is how the algorithm works when it comes to consistency. It is not necessarily daily. You don't have to do daily to appease it. It, it helps, but it's more like consistently which means if you post on a wednesday all you have to do is post that next week before that next wednesday or on that next wednesday if you're feeling frisky and that's all the algorithm cares about because the algorithm will push your video to people that don't know who you are but that like the similar stuff if you do the stuff that you're supposed to do with like the how you make the thumbnail how you make the title all that fun stuff and what it cares about is if i recommend this one video on this day Will I trust that you will have another video the next week that I can push to someone else again? Right? It's like, can it, does it expect you to make a video again within this time frame? If you do, it's good. So I would say it's at least one a week. If you can put out one a week, that appeases the, con the, the, the algorithm, which means that's the amount of scheduling you have to have is one a week. You can add on to that. That's great. And it doesn't need to be the same day, by the way, just one a week. But if, if, if you do multiple in a week, same day kind of helps with just keeping that consistent for you personally in terms of your workflow. Get a piece on, a, <laughs> on a less technical note, like if you aren't too used to recording, like be comfortable hearing your own voice because as much as you talk and record, you're going to spend as much time editing and hearing yourself rehearse, not rehearse, but by re and play like what the words you just said back into your ear. So if you're not comfortable hearing your own voice, like you got to get over that fairly quickly because you're going to be going to have it. You know, I, <laughs> I, apologize, I apologize to the audience because like I know that I probably said um way too many times today that if I were to edit this video, I think I would have to get into the mindset of not cutting every time I said it out. <laughs> this is you. This is you. <laughs> um, okay, on, on Proof's point, does anyone have a, a person in their house or who they live with that they play their audio for before they post a video? Because I do. Because I can never listen to anything I edit in terms of audio and be like, I sound I sound horrible, right? Like, And they're like, you I, sound fine. I was like, no, no, I sound horrible. I'm pretty sure. I used to have the same mindset, but after a year or so editing, I basically come accustomed to my own voice and I don't mind it anymore, actually, to hear my own voice. Otherwise, I couldn't add my own, edit my own videos because I would go crazy. <laughs> every day no, this is why it's good to have one two people on one channel yeah that's, oh, that's the Brother, hack right there there's I just times my mom that's it there's times i yeah. hear my voice and i'm just like okay maybe next time i'll just go a little bit deeper you know maybe <laughs> oh my god i got i got that I the next one i'm like i saw like that man what's going on you don't understand I'm like at some point we decided let's bump our audio quality and we got some lapels hook them up to our phones each your phone recording you know everybody's got their own audio like that's that's gonna be crisp audio. We came to the realization real quick. I'm loud. He's quiet. That is Donald Bob. That's how it goes. Love that. Love that. The hey, we, tr we tried. We tried. Okay, you try being more vocal, mm -hmm. and it kind of worked. And it was like, okay, I'm gonna try to be a little less, less loud, a little less toned down, and it just it sounded so weird. <laughs> it just didn't work.
Mission the weirdest failed. thing as I was growing, like my as my channel grew, I kept getting comments about my voice and how people liked my voice. It was like, oh my gosh, proof! Like I love your voice. I was like, thanks, because <laughs> it's the voice I got. <laughs> Right? Hey, man, hey, man, we internationals have an advantage. We got an accent. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have All an accent. Just just I, I, I'm glad that I lost my accent if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. You don't realize Dutch people speaking English is the worst thing ever. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's so bad. I actually went back on stream about a month or two ago, and because people were curious about um, the Spike Brothers Legion stuff, I was like, I actually got a video on that from way back in the day. What's like 2013? I want to say so, seven years Super ago. Eight. And I was, Man, I, I had to like rec I recorded it in my Godbrother's house through my phone trying to not talk too loud because I wasn't used to hearing people hear me record. So my voice sounded extra deep and the quality was terrible. I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing to watch. And it surely was. <laughs> the first time I ever did a vlog, man, in public, I was, I was, I, I couldn't say words. I, I can't bring myself to vlog because I'd be too awkward. <laughs> I, I think I could do it now. I, I just don't go outside now. So it's, it's okay. okay. So would you, ever, would you ever do an ASMR video? No, no. It's a joke on the channel. <laughs> I would, I would stream, listen to proof on stream. ASMR. <laughs> on stream. Gotten, uh... Oh, go ahead. No, on stream. Literally, I'll turn up the gain. I'll whip a microphone, get real close, and be like, "Hey guys, let's let's talk about Vanguard." You know, like literally, that's what I'll do. But just as a joke, <laughs> I, I would never seriously do it because my voice did, is like, yeah, I do have a joke too. Yeah, I don't think I I'll do like... it because I have a condenser mic, and like going up to it won't do anything. It'll do something. I'll tell you what. I was uh. It was a. I was playing Vanguard Zero, and my opponent. It was like tail end of the game, and my opponent could do exactly one play to beat me. And I got real close to my like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and I kept doing that over and over, and that was like the only time I really done a ASMR stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 a fun meme. I would never do it seriously. Nah, I can't do it seriously. <laughs> but I think overall we've covered a lot of stuff about Vanguard and the community, Vanguard YouTubing. Pretty much. I was going to give you guys the last question of what would you take from this um, um, today's panel, but we kind of discussed in the previous question, surprisingly. Yeah, <laughs> I got a question. So, we've got hit a lot of positive notes coming through here. What's mm -hmm. like one negative experience you've had while recording or editing or playing, like streaming, etc.? Just give people like a full scope of what it's like. Do you mention how hard it is to make videos? Numbers oh, suck. <laughs> no, no, no. They, everybody, I feel like everybody's gonna relate. You need to have an emotional control over separating whenever you're making videos and your personal life. Because when that kind of gaps, we had a video not too long ago, right before we posted our burnout video, where I just had a bad day at work, stressful, long. I came home, uh, home, we started recording video. What was I playing? Um, it was one of the harder decks to pilot, like Gabriel knows you, one of them. Oh, it was uh, Fenrir. Fenrir. I was piloting Fenrir, and it's a pretty decent combo-y deck. Like, you, it's straightforward, but you need to get pieces, and you got Soul Axe and all that. And he's playing a really strong deck, and I'm like, oh, Valkyrion. And I'm like, I know I got to prep my PGs. I know I got to do this, and I don't do it. And of course, he crits me to death, and I'm like, and in my head, I'm just mad at myself because the day has been stressful, and it's transitioning, and I'm super mad at myself for not only telling myself I should have done this, then not doing it, and then hitting between the bullshit luck that he has, like, literally, it all just built up. I grabbed the deck and fucking chucked it. You can see it at the end of the video as a blooper. Get the, get the door. <laughs> oh, I love bloopers. Oh, man. So I just, just have an add-on. Like that. Like, it's going to happen. Your day, your personal life, it might transition to your videos. If you can control that, great. Sometimes you don't need to, and it's just going to come naturally. Like, you're human. You got these, like, oof. I would We're not robots. Actually, I would actually flip it around at the same time because... Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of content creators can relate to this to a bit. Your first negative comment that you get can be really annoying because that will hurt you to some extent if you take it really personal. And Danny, it Danny. can be okay. hard. 
it, no, 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 no. Danny Dag is a meme, but actual somebody that comments about, right. let's say you made really a really nice video for yourself. You put a lot of hours in it, and somebody criticizes a specific point, and it really strikes you the wrong way that you t take it really personal. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for uh, for beginners to separate your video content creation, what you're doing, and your personal self to distance yourself from the negativity that will arise to being in the spotlight, being the uh, community person that results being a YouTuber be is. And I think that is something that can be really, really annoying when you start making content. At least it was for me at the beginning when I first started getting some negative f comments or negative feedback that it was kind of a hard switch to be able to turn off to, to say, okay, this, this, they don't really mean it to me personally, but as the content creator work that I do. So I shouldn't take it away from the camera when everything is off. I have my own personal life. This is just a side job to some extent. Like you're going to relate to exactly what I'm about to say. Like I've had those moments. I read a comment. I'm like, just thinking to myself, maybe they're right. Maybe I did something wrong and all that. And then I can't remember right now what the fuck that comment was. <laughs> yeah. Like back then, I was stressing about it. I was like, man, it, right it now. It sticks to you the entire it. day. Like the yeah. entire day. It's ruined your, your whole day, that bad comment. It's ruined your whole day. <laughs> this kind of goes back to like that smart criticism remark I made earlier on is like, understand like what comments actually matter and which ones just don't, right? And I think comments about, like, I, th I think critiques, let's not say comments, let's say critiques of how you do stuff should be taken into consideration but just blatant hate at, at, either at you as a person or or why'd you make this video about luard everyone's making videos about luard it's stupid i don't want to listen to this right i'm like don't listen to those guys right l listen to someone like oh i had never seen a combo like this before i thought you would use x card like this in a deck like that I, did you consider that i was like and then maybe that's someone you respond to like yes i did i, I should have done a better job explaining all the awesome other possibilities that you could be playing in this deck that's on me thank you for this comment right those are the kind of comments you can look at and go this made me better today let's move on it mm -hmm. might have a negative like connotation of like oh they didn't like it no but it's more like what can i do better next time i'll do it better next time and that person will comment again it'll be great right those are the kind of things of like smart more system nuanced. that you should be really go after and then in terms of like the grind that philip and then we're talking about of like like how like how that can affect you as a person i will always be the the firm believer of like you matter way more than your content don't ever let anything don't you 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 have no obligation to nobody no contracts no nothing build your content how you build it if you need a mental health day or you need to just sit down or your day sucked and you want to take a nap no judgments here go for it i literally yeah, came back from a vacation last week like literally and I was like, I didn't make content for two for like five days. I had no internet access, and all the stuff happened. Ban list announcements, uh, Digimon stuff, Pokemon stuff. Uh, what what else happened for Vanguard Zero? Something cool happened. Like, oh, the Spike Brothers came out, and I was like, oh, I couldn't I couldn't do the Spike Brothers release on the day of, you know. And I was like, oh, I missed all this stuff, but I don't care. I'll make content about it later when I want to. And like the idea of like you are your goal setter right you are the person that decides when stuff comes out when stuff should be done therefore if you don't want to do it you don't have to like uh, never never sacrifice your well-being for a stream or for a video it's just not worth it ever yeah, except yeah, when you gotta absolutely. edit a video till 3 a.m <laughs> so <laughs> relaxing i do find that relaxing sometimes so yeah. it's kind of interesting hearing um how comments for youtube works for you all because like it's all based off what they saw from your video right um in streaming Usually. it's kind of interesting because like you kind of be put on a pedestal when you, people are in your chat talking because like if you do anything wrong if you lose a game like they they all take it offensive right they, they come at you and be like so like example for me is like um i was playing against um in ranked in zero mind you this is the worst example because it's zero i really don't care about it right but everyone else does um but i go against like two narukami players in zero and i'm losing and i'm playing narukami and then like everyone is bashing of how bad of a narukami player i am oh yeah that happens right? um and it, a recent it, example was um me and different fight did the the second wave of spike brother stuff oh my god it was my first time even looking at it let alone like backseating with gameplay stuff and we misplayed it like half the comments were like yeah, oh my god what you what'd you do this why'd you do that why why didn't you do like for me it was a learning experience because it was like okay cool now i know i don't have to be so all in the next time but it was yeah. my first time experience like nice. it seemed like as a similar to like being put on the pedestal like we're not allowed to make mistakes yeah. as 
content people or let alone me like if i make a misplay with spikes like it's like oh, oh, the end of the world like right. he's not the true he's not the true master that i thought he was and true all champion this, <laughs> all this. Dude, you're you're out and he's supposed to mess in five seconds yeah you know, so like an example is like oh since i'm kind of new on on um, Twitch, I got like affiliate like two months ago, right? But like, Congrats. I um, thanks. <laughs> um, but like, I go in and after I lost that, everyone in the chat just started calling me banished samurai, right? And like, I didn't take it offensive because I was like, okay, yeah, they're having fun, whatever. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Nothing's going to stop me. But then like, every time like they come back on, like you get the same people coming back on and you hear it, you're just like, God, I really hate that name. <laughs> yeah. Um, personally, I fail a lot on stream, and I mean a lot. I, I lose a lot. But I've never really gotten like, oh, Steven, you suck uh, on my streams. And I think what, what what I do is I'm harder on myself than anyone ever will be in my videos. You know, I will judge me more than anyone else. And I do that live and in person. I will talk through every play I'm thinking about. And then the second I make a misplay, I'm like, oh, I'm the dumbest person in the world. And then I think <laughs> it, it shows that I'm real. I'm thinking about my competitive viability. I think about this game on a level that is some would argue obsessive. That's fine. Uh, and then they see that and they go, well, I don't need to. Like, like, like the people that would hate on me, they're like, oh, he already hates himself. It's fine. We don't need to do it. But in reality, what I'm doing is I'm bettering myself. The next game, I don't make that mistake and no one comments nothing. Right? So I, I think, like, I have that. I do that to myself. I don't want to say, you like, don't hate yourself. Don't yell at yourself. Don't do that. You're perfect. Don't worry about it. But if, but if you want to be your own critic, that will train you to learn that well, uh, well, 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 it'll train you not to make the mistakes people will critique in a way that is hateful, but it also will just naturally make you like bulletproof for those kind of statements, I think. Mm -hmm. And so like a thing that I low key love are my haters. People that like have discord groups or people that like literally just crap on me that I don't know about. And I know they exist and I love it. I love it so much. And you wanna know why? Because I find it hilarious that people think I'm that relevant to talk about behind my back or in a way that is just like, let's all hate on them together. <laughs> I find that amazing. And that like, to me is like a level that I thought I'd never reach. And it just makes me feel more proud to do the stuff that I'm doing. Cause I'm like, people freely hate it. <laughs> I saw one oh, of your you YouTube your live streams. Out of your day to hate me? Thank you. <laughs> I saw I'm one really, of your... I, like, if I, I would, I would low-key love that so much. I Haters saw, find me. I saw one of your YouTube live streams one time, and then like this was right before the blood came out, right for um, yeah. Global. And someone was just like, "Oh, you're gonna get the blood. What do you think is better, Dungri or the blood?" Right? And then like you said, Dungri, and the guy's like, "Oh, you're just like everyone else." I'm like, "What does that even mean?" <laughs> like, why did you want? Why did you ask the question then if you didn't like the answer? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or those people that like watch your deck profile videos and you're like you know you could have played this i'm like then why are you watching this video if you already know how to play the deck why are you at why are you watching this <laughs> oh, a, I love those cool people. oh i love those people <laughs> a way to diffuse things on stream is kind of get ahead of it so like yeah kind of like what steven really? was saying like he kind of bashes on himself like if he makes a misplay like for me i've learned to like back when I was streaming more often, I would like take a moment to go back and think about the game, win or lose, and being like, did I do the correct play here and there? Or did I m m uh, make a misstep here and there? And like, if you acknowledge it and like kind of think about it, like people will be less likely to come in and start bash you for playing poorly or making a mistake. It's hard to multitask, like playing, controlling the what's going on on the, sh on the screen while trying to be entertaining to the people while you're mm -hmm. streaming. like. I've done it a lot to where I like I would miss something here, like oh man, like I was trying to respond to a question and I miss a the timer going down all of a sudden. Things like I've that. lost Mulligan. I've lost Mulligan to answering chat questions. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. The worst. I feel yeah, like the, the thing... overall like um theme to take in is like negativity. You can just ignore it. Like you just continue doing what you're doing, right? Or, or it's a, no, no. Or it's a sign that you're doing everything right. Yeah. Because if you're, that means you're creating controversy. What you say matters. People are valuing it. You know, like that's a a big thing to keep in mind. Like if you're not relevant. You're not successful. And if you're not relevant, no one's talking about you. And guess who never stops talking about you? Haters. Haters. Or you, they will or you can, never you, talk you about can, you. You can, it can, bleh, I can't talk because yeah, you can <laughs> acknowledge it or and then spin it back at them. Like, oh, yeah. oh man, you suck. Like, you know what? I kind of do sometimes. And then you just keep going about your day. <laughs> Yo, that, that reminded me of one comment in our comment section once where a guy just went and just went, man, these guys suck. And I'm like, I, I replied back funnily, like, I'm sorry, can you give us a reason why? The next comment back, he was like, F you. I was like, all right. But then they had no reason. <laughs> right. The, oh, yeah. we're, we're talking about a lot of negatives here. Have you ever, has anyone here gotten that paragraph comment that's like, 
Any day. You're the best. Thank you so much for everything you do. Here's what you've inspired me to do. Here's all the things I'm doing now, my locals. Here's the games I'm playing now because of you. Does anyone get those? No. I can't recall. So, I don't get the ones that you listen to. Those are the ones that you look at and you go, I either don't need to respond to this because everything was said and I've done it by what I've done in my past, or I respond to it and I go, this is why I do what I do. Thank you. And you can use that as your fuel to keep going. That's another source of motivation kind of thing we're talking about earlier. I see more of that in my Discord channel. Like people yeah, join specifically sure. to be like, oh my that gosh, I found you through um, insert video here. Like this is really cool. Like because mm -hmm. things like that, that's what I kind of more latch on to than the negative comments. Or that, the that, positive. That's my streams are probably more so for me. Is like that's yeah. my like, gate to my community a lot more. Like I literally am on stream just to talk with the people that are the fans of my videos, and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to pick out the negative comments than the positive ones. Right. I don't get the those paragraphs. I do get the multiple ones, like the mini sections of uh, "You inspired me to do this" or "You." Uh, those are the same. Those are the same. Yeah, I say paragraphs. I mean, I mean, two I sentences. I, I don't get the paragraphs. What I do I'm get a couple of those. Those are fun. But what, I, what I do like, there are some viewers within my community that uh, comment multiple times on multiple videos. They give me paragraphs, but they then argument about certain things I said in the videos. They gave their vision about certain points and give their opinion. And that really shows that they watch the entire video and they're in invested and they really want they're to- They're engaging with it on the level that yeah. you want. Like, like they're having a discussion with you. They want to talk yeah, with you. That's what it's basically. for, literally. That's exactly what it's for. Who, who's, got the mill ground? A bit. who's got the mill ground? It, this is more prominent in gameplay videos because it's hard for anything else. But who's got the mill ground where you get a notification, you see the comment like, oh, you misplayed here. And then five seconds later, because it's addressed in the video, you go back to the comment and go, oh, comment doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. <laughs> I've had that. <laughs> I have that. Most of the people that see the thumbnail comment before they watch it, and they're like, I'm watching, I'm, I, I already hate this. <laughs> I was like, what? You haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> For our game place, it's even better because we do a misplay. Someone's immediately in the comments typing. And like five seconds later, it's either text on the screen or we address it in the video going, oh, fuck, that was a misplay. Yeah. And then the comment is magically gone. That's I would like to good content right there. I, I do I do remember some positive ones, but it's mostly from the people that um come around very often, be like, Oh, this is great, like thank you for putting this out there, things like that. And then by extension, I have had people tell me that I misplay, and then I go back and look at the footage and I didn't misplay, and then I comment back saying that I didn't misplay, then they're kind of right. just go about their day. <laughs> like or I explain why I did what I did and then explain how I could have done it better in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you and then you realize I'm gonna make this note the next time I make a video and explain my process. That way, that comment never happens ever again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Coming back a little bit to the the negative part, because I still wanted to add something to that. Like, it's also you know we talk a lot about like you know kind of controlling the negativity that people put at you. And of course, like another thing, like important distinction to have in mind is like when you're streaming or making videos, like you know it's fine that even if you misplay or like you know you do you make mistakes you can just spin it off as like a joke or whatever and like the important thing to keep in mind is like we're not like <clears throat> wcc we're not people like that are at worlds every year like at top eight every regionals like right. we're entertainers it's fine to make mistakes because we're not like grinding away to make the most optimal plays like we are just content creators we are entertainers you know of course you want to still play optimally but it's nowhere near as big of a deal as if you were like a top competitive player and i think it's also important to like keep in mind the extreme cases because like you will like i don't want to um, sugarcoat things too much because like yeah most of the time you will have great people and even the people that say negative stuff they phrase it in ways that are like don't even come off as offensive it's just like yeah you didn't like this part you explained yourself it's fine um mm -hmm. yeah. but then there's there will be some people that are straight up just you know they don't even see that boundary they will go say the most obscene things possible and you don't have to deal with that like you don't have to please everyone if someone is clearly just out for evil like it's perfectly fine to just knock them down you know whether it's like you know, timing them out in your chat or, you know, high, like getting rid of their comments if you clearly see that they're affecting other people, especially. Right. Like, about time when you're in streaming, streams, for sure, yeah. Especially in streaming, like there'll be people that come in, they make the experience worse for other people. And then like, I, for example, I have streams where I don't do something about it. And then my, my subs will go to me and they're like, oh man, that, that guy really ruined the whole experience. And I'm like, well, damn, we should have we should have banned them then because clearly that's making the whole experience worse for everyone else. So I don't think you need to necessarily... That's something that I was... Like, for many years of doing content, I tried to avoid any sort of, like, confrontation or, like, you know, if there's a negative comment, just let it sit there and stuff like that. But these days, it's just, like, you know, 
it's it's important to make a distinction sometimes and if people are just being overly negative and just throwing stuff that clearly doesn't make any sense and it's just clearly there to trigger people it's fine to just shoot that down you know there's no point in like spending even allocating space in your brain to deal with that you know or to my, think about it much yeah. more my rule for like actually dealing with people like that is the same rule i have for dealing with toxic players at my locals is i just quietly walk over I tell the judge there, hey, that guy is threatening someone or he's cheating or whatever. I don't make a big deal about it. It's no one needs to know. No one needs to be worried about that guy other than me. And then it's over with. I do the same thing on my stream. I'll just quietly go over, click the ban button. Don't even mention it. Move on with whatever it is I'm doing. Easy peasy. Right? That's All the right, best guys, way to handle it. my next content. <laughs> <laughs> just like you just banned it? No. What are you talking about? Really? No. You got a similar, like, if there's someone on the extreme, yeah, that's a media ban. But if someone, like, I got a rule that you can have a negative opinion or uh, give your opinion and it's not the best one. But if you're extremely negative and just being a dick for no reason, and I see multiple times you comment, it's like a three-strike rule. Okay, you, you said your piece here. You're, you're going to go away. Oh, you're here again? Oh, again? Oh. I don't need you. Maybe he'll change. Maybe he'll change. I don't know. You don't ever. Like, Oof. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to love the chat comment that's going to appear on this stream and see like what people are saying and be like, oh, wow, they're really taking this to heart. Yeah. <laughs> Nine out of ten times, that same person that's commenting negatively on your video probably is commenting negative on my video, on Steven's video, on different yeah. fights video. It's usually the same kind of persons. Like, Danny Deck is a meme for a reason. <laughs> exactly. There are people who literally just hate deck profile videos in any game ever. And they're like, why do these exist? I'm like, because people like them, man. That's why they exist. What do you, what, what do, you want to do? There's one thing I also wanted to add about. To kind of figure out how to start a deck. You, you're saying yeah. different? Uh, there's one thing I want to add as well is like not necessarily with just community negativity, but also with like your personal mental health. Like we talked about, like it's fine to take a break and definitely do like this isn't your job. You you have to take your days off. Um, and another like the biggest thing for me after all these years of doing this is like by far the biggest issue that still comes up every now and again is like don't let the numbers control you. Don't let the numbers get to your head too much. Don't even look at the numbers sometimes. Like it's crazy how many times like my people around me they'll they'll be like why do you always have like your YouTube studio page always open you know and it's like I I got to the point where when I turn on the stream I actually don't look at any numbers i don't know what how many viewers i have i don't know how much anything i have i'm just putting on a show and just having a good time and it's that's all that really matters so it's like sometimes those numbers can really get to your head and like especially if you're streaming it's so in the moment that like you see a dip in viewers and you're like oh my god you start like worrying what am i doing wrong what's going on like and then you'll start acting differently and then people will start tuning out even more because they're like oh something's wrong with them today like we'll come back another day and then you know so it's like it's important to not let the numbers get to you like i cannot stress that enough like especially once you've kind of picked up a little bit the numbers will definitely you'll you'll see that like a rise and it's going up and up and up in your youtube studio is like ooh, plus something percent plus this percent the green arrows it's like oh so great and then you'll put another video <laughs> 10 of 10 oh like, that 10 <laughs> it's like too long it's too long yeah. oh my god my, so my, my, is, yeah the dream is the over is 10 out of 10 yeah. like like, like, like aspect, having the numbers sorry go ahead uh, yeah to that aspect i guess our channel is a little bit lucky because we do, like, the proxy plays, of course, are going to hit the most views. Everybody wants to see them, what the new cards do, yada, yada, yada. That's where our popularity came from. And then we do our weekly news segment, the V-Time. I exactly know. That's a 10 out of 10 immediately. I don't even have to look at the numbers. Like, I know it's not going to get anywhere near the averages. But if you're happy with it, that's fine. You know, if it's, exactly. a, it's a video you're happy yeah. to make, it's fine. We if it's had a of whole fun. year. We had a whole year where all our content was just the V-Time. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's oh, for, for those of you that don't know, I'm like for the people that don't know, it's like the on YouTube Studio, like when you upload a video, it ranks it to your last nine uploads and basically ranks them in those last ten. So basically, when you upload something that doesn't go off, it shows it as it's the tenth place of your last ten uploads. Basic, basically, it's worse than whatever you've uploaded recently, and so that can easily get to your head. So. Just that's only by views, by the way. No, no other <laughs> metric. Just by views. For me, that's yeah, especially yeah. problematic because every time that Bush Road announces a set with Spike Brothers, Mega Conley, and Tachikaze, I know for one month long my standard videos <laughs> will be ten out of tens because. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know. the mobile app and you upload the video, and then thirty minutes later you just see the green, the gray arrows. Yeah. Right, is it green or is it gray? 
yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I have a firm rule. Never use my numbers to set expectations. Only use them as like an analysis of what I've been doing. If what I'm doing is working, I will continue to do it. But I will never, ever go, I expect this to do that because of these numbers. That makes no sense to me. I am at the mercy of the algorithm. I could one day just become irrelevant because people stop playing Vanguard. There's no reason for me to expect success. I should just reflect on it when it happens and be like, that's great. I'm going to mm -hmm. do the same stuff I plan on doing anyway. Right? And so I think numbers are important for understanding how well you are doing, but it's not important for s judging what you should be doing and whether or not that's actually a value to you. That's, that's all on you and your experience, nothing else. So actually um, coming into like the closing of uh, this panel, um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you guys would want to do a shout out for yourselves and then probably answer the last question. Um, so what would you take from today's panel to give to new and upcoming content creators? I know this is kind of similar to like the style of content they should start out with, but I would feel like this would be more like um, you guys can say, yeah, just don't deal with the negativity or something like right. special to you that you thought helped you a lot doing content um, creation. So yeah, um, we'll start in the order that we introduced you. So we will top deck hero, living proof, true champion, um, Steven, Vanguard insider, and then different fight. All right, we're both gonna give our opinion. Like, I'm gonna say this right now to anybody still wa uh, watching. Mm -hmm. You just got bombarded with a lot of information what you should and shouldn't do from all of us. Doing all of it is going to be nearly impossible. So my word of advice that I think our channel, or at least me doing most of the editing, has helped, just stay dedicated and keep doing it while you still love it. Like, if you're not doing it and loving it, then don't do it. Uh, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your energy, and it's going to show through the camera, through the video, and people are gonna notice. That's my word of advice. And you pretty much said exactly what I was gonna say. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> we get a twofer. We get a, hey, we get to hear it again. Sink in our brain. On my turn? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so for shout outs, just shout out to everybody here, because I, I haven't formally talked to Eric and Top Deck Heroes, but I have talked to Steven and Chris before, and you, Naro Samurai, I haven't talked to you before, so it was nice meeting all y'all, and getting a chance to interact with you this was a lot of fun mm -hmm. so shout outs to the convention people for putting this together sean for reaching out to me and asking me oh, to do wow. it because i was apprehensive about it because i haven't been producing content for a while so i was like eh, do i don't really want to but i thought like i'd be i'd kick myself if i missed this so i'm glad you're I part of the community whether it. you like it or not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm too far in great i can't get out of this hole. Proof. i'm too far <laughs> in here now <laughs> and I guess for takeaway, like the one takeaway that kind of helped me out is um, persevere and like kind of have an idea of where you want to go beyond the first couple of videos, because once those are done and out there, they kind of exist in the world and people are going to wonder what's coming from you next. So as long as you know, have an idea where you want to go, then you can just keep producing videos to your liking and, and take it from there. And, and then I guess it's on to me now. Um, I'm the true champion, Steven. Type that end anywhere, you'll probably find me. That's great. No need to do it though. I appreciate you guys just for being here and listening to Vanguard, listening to content creation. This is a thing I love to talk about, and I love talking about it with other content creators like these wonderful people here. It's a pleasure to be here again, Sean. Everyone in Carpet Con, thank you for putting on and having me. Real pleasure. And the thing that I think is the best thing to take away, and while it was never really explicitly said here in this talk, I think the biggest thing is stop being selfish in a sense. Is Try, stop like like so many people when they try and start acting like uh, doing the kind of creation they go what will this do for me and they don't ask what can i do for people and that's the real way to create value the real way to find motivation the real way to find success and authenticity all these things we've been saying is try and do what people would want or do what you think is a good thing for the community you want to be a part of and that will just breed you all the things we've talked about that we all say is the best stuff to do so don't be selfish the next time you enter a conversation ask yourself or ask them what can i do for you and not what can you do for me and i promise you your mindset will change and you'll figure out what you should be doing at all times all right on to you um banger inside well, uh, <clears throat> Fingered Insider, or uh, better known as Mr. Tiny, you can search out any of those names in Twitter, Facebook, or in YouTube. Again, sh big shout out to uh, the con creators for hosting this. It was a pretty honor to be part of this. Also, it was a pleasure meeting you for the first time, Living Proof. We have interacted <laughs> a lot via different videos with the Zazan uh, thing. And, um, 
for me personally, what I would take away from uh, this con is the, when you go start trying to make your own YouTube channel or trying to make a, become a YouTuber yourself, try to pick and find your own niche. But the most important thing is something that you will enjoy making for years to years to come, even if nobody should watch it, or better said, even if nobody would watch it, if you enjoy making that, then you will probably succeed in the long run. Yeah, I guess for <laughs> one thing I found funny is as, as soon as you said it's like, oh, we're we're getting close to ending, I was like, uh, look at this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it now, I was like, please be let this man talk for his camera. <laughs> The moment yeah. you said it's time, I was like, ah, oh, time to start working. <laughs> I was like, it's probably got a good 10 minutes in it. I'll, I'll make it fast. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw it too. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I wanted you guys to, you guys like talking. I didn't want to cut you guys off. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fun memes. Fun memes. Fun memes. Living, all it is. But yeah, so different fight on, you know, literally everywhere. You, you'll find me. But yeah, honestly, I want to give, uh, above all else, you know, outside of just like talking about takeaways, I want to give the biggest thank you to like CarFiCon existing in general, this year has been really, really just painful for the community as a whole with no events and nothing to get co collectively excited about. I'm really glad that you guys came up with this initiative to essentially give something to the community to be hyped about and look forward to and have something that can at least, they can direct their attention and passion of Vanguard towards as well. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we can talk about, you know, in takeaways, but I think above all else, it's so important that in this time, when there's not so much to look forward to outside of reveals and the anime and like those kind of things at the very least there's these kind of cool events and i really hope that in the future you know if if you know i don't know how people are going to receive this but i'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing and you know i really hope that we can see more of these kind of incentives in the future because i mean we don't know how the world's going to look like in the next few months and i think that having these kind of events you know even just online is really really important and it's cool it's something you know the vanger vangers existed for almost 10 years now it's the first time something this has happened i think it's absolutely amazing so mm -hmm. above more so than anything i'm just really thankful for you guys for putting this on i'm really hyped to see how the whole thing will turn out as a whole too so Honestly, just biggest thank you. All right, we got everybody, right? I, I mean, we so. forgot to say yeah. we're the top deck heroes, but that, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show it, right? As long as you I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't need well, to well, my well, name. I know who I am. I just want to make sure because I'm editing this, right? And I kind of lost count, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess it's my turn. Hey, guys, I hope you overall enjoyed um, Vanguards of Influence with some of our um, outstanding guests today. I want to thank them all for coming out giving their opinions, talking it out. I think overall it was a great time. Um, my name is Naru Samurai. You can check me out on Naru Samurai on Twitch.tv or on YouTube coming up because I'm going to start making videos because I'm going to take what they said to heart and actually hey. put it to work. Hey, He's going to be a lab rat. <laughs> He's going to be a lab rat. <laughs> I will be the test. And if I do well and you guys support me, you better do the same as well if you want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> Hey. Go subscribe! Subscribe! <laughs> Thank like, you. Subscribe, Thank you. resubscribe, Punch unsubscribe, that bell. And do it Punch again. It. <laughs> but overall, hit guys, that bell. hit that bell. Hope you enjoy the rest of the con. I hope you're enjoying the con, and we'll hope to see you guys next time in the next um, Vanguard um, card fight con, right? So yeah. hey, we'll you catch you in the next you gotta one. Make another Maybe. one next. I'm back Maybe we get a me. physical uh, con panel with different fights, Solomon and me, in actual somewhere in an event or something. Where, where yeah, would yeah, we yeah. be? Like, we can't all <laughs> just go to one <laughs> part of the, 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 the world and all me, right? Yo, no? I, would, I have a passport and I've always wanted to go to London. Let's do it. Let's do it. Exactly. <laughs> Take a location. Let's go. But overall, guys, hope you guys are enjoying the con. See you in the next one. We're going to switch it back over to our overall thing. Everyone, say bye. Peace out, boys. Later. Later. See ya.